What is going on, people? Welcome to Throw Down Your Questions, episode 223. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. At the homestead, but you obviously you can't tell because we don't have any video at this time. But yes, I am back and I'm not on a phone. It's Chris okay. Seeley. Hey, what's up, everyone? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Brian Monjoma. What's good, people? Brett Murdoch. What's up, everybody? And Adam Vale. Yo, Joe. Yeah, right. What's going on, people? All right. Um, there's still some funniness going on with the whole uh, YouTube Google situation. So uh, just bear with us because they decided, hey, yeah, we're gonna take Hangouts away. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, no, they didn't take they didn't take Hangouts away. It's still here. It's yeah, just, it's just a now gimp- it's just not on YouTube anymore. Yeah, exactly. So it's some bullshit. So we'll figure something out. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Rico. I'm not going to, you know, blow up what's going on with him, but shout out to Riku. He was on Throwdown for, you know, a reason. He's not going to be around for the next couple months until the summer. Uh, he's on hiatus. As a matter of fact, he, he, if you go to his Twitter, his, um, and Carlos, I need you to help me out with this. Uh, who is that Twitter? I know it's an anime guy that doesn't put out books very frequently. Yeah, that's, that's, it's a mangaka named uh, Togashi. He's, Togashi, he's, yeah. He changed his name to Togashi Sun One. <laughs> he's he's super famous. So he's he's a creator of Yu Yu Hakusho and uh, Hunter X Hunter, and he's recently he's he's famous for just being on hiatus for Hunter X Hunter. So damn pretty pretty adept name to put <laughs> during this time. Yeah, like I was wondering, like, what the hell's going on with, with that picture? I was I thought it was just Riku being weird, but then uh, I think it was Big Boss. He was like, "Oh shit, that's Tagashi." I'm like, oh, "Okay, I got gotcha. you," because all you guys complain about him, you know. All right. Um. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you also, people. Yeah. <laughs> you anime people. You anime people. Yeah. Also, I want to give a shout out to um our fans. Man, you guys are crazy. We haven't gotten this many questions in a very, very long time. Like yeah, putting it on Discord, good. man. Yeah, putting it on Discord definitely helps. Like because now everybody has one specific spot. Even though some guys are still throwing their questions up on YouTube, which is perfectly fine. That's fine. I'm just not going to advertise that. <laughs> you know, but. Throw them where you can, man. If you want to throw them up on Coalition or YouTube, you go right ahead. But Discord is the place, and this is where we're getting the lion's share of the questions now, which is pretty awesome. But because of that, well, we're not going to do what we did last week, where we spent like 40 minutes on the first fucking question. I'm not saying we're going to do like a, we're not gonna, we're not going to snap through these too fast, but we're going to be faster for sure. Yo, man, uh, wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it up, man. All right, that's it, man. <laughs> does, we're, that we're, mean, does, yeah. that mean, does that mean you can do like the Academy Awards? You can play the wrap it up song as soon as we... <laughs> <laughs> they were taking too long to answer. Well, one, one of these days, we're going to get a soundboard, and that has to be one of the things when someone goes over time, man. Yeah, no, I want to do I want to do use, use a thing from Dave Chappelle. Wrap it up, be wrap it up. That's the <laughs> one I want to use. All right, man, so uh, with that out of the way, let's get to our first question. Mr. Annihilator83, PlayStation gamers tend to favor physical games. I'm not surprised given how the terms on PSN for customers is crap. It has immediate pay- it has uh, immediate payment for pre-orders, and it is hard to get refunds. What do you think Sony should do to make the terms more fair to customers? By the way, I didn't know that PlayStation gamers tended to favor physical games. This is news to me. I, um, yeah, go I ahead, think man. It's because they don't get a good return when they bring them in. Or they wait? No, they do get a good return. They actually get like what is it, thirty-five bucks or something like that for trade-ins? So for, they, on PSN? No, for uh, PlayStation games. I mean, uh, sorry, Nintendo games, NES, okay. and yeah, all well, those. So, yeah, how would you games. guys uh, fix PSN? I haven't had any issues with PSN as far as the customer service end goes. But then again, I've only returned one game, and it was pretty swift. So, uh, wait, but wait, I, what but are, we, I, are we talking about returning? You said physical. no. We're talking about we're talking about. Um, um, he's talking, and the question is talking about digital games. Yes, how you oh, how returning? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've returned yeah. two on PSN. Yeah, and I've gotten full refunds. No issues. You go through the private chat. You just have to hit up support. You do a live chat, and then you explain your issue, and then they give you a refund. They'll they'll usually say, you know, we usually don't do this. Well, they did for me twice. Yeah, that's true. That's so. what happened to me because I I bought some game twice. Accidentally, like yeah, that's cool. You know, because they saw that I already had it. You know, um, oh, it happened with me with the division with the first division. So I wound up pre ordering. I did the beta. Right, so I pre-ordered, and when they played the beta, I'm like, damn, right at the end of it, when you finish it, it's like, hey, you want to upgrade? I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I want the season pass, I'm upgrading. So it took me straight to the checkout, and I checked out. And then I realized, at the time, I was like, wait a minute, this is the full price. 
This yeah, so, just yes. a dad, huh? so anyway, how would you guys, um, hold on, let me make sure I'm muted here. Um, how would you guys fix PSN customer service then? Because to you me, just I'm like, add what they have yeah. on Steam, yeah, same I'm, integration. You want to go into detail? Never, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, I've never dealt with, with uh, PlayStation customer service whatsoever, so I have no clue as to the ins and outs of like what's going on with all that. And as far as the whole, uh, PlayStation gamers prefer prefer physical games. I kind of understand because, I mean, that was me for most of this generation. I mean, I just barely started going all day, uh, all day, all day, all digital. day digital. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, and I kind of and every time I look at my uh, at my uh, game collection, my physical game collection, I'm like, ah, I could have had Resident Evil there. I I could have had Red Dead there. I could have had you know. So it's like it's like one of those things that like it carries over for the rest of time. Like that collection you can never get rid of and you can always display it. And a digital, you don't, you don't know if when you go digital, if for the next generation, that thing gets carried over. Like Microsoft just barely, like they're kind of the innovative that this gen with, with sort of backwards compatibility with digital and physical games from previous generation. Has anyone in here actually had any problems with PSN customer service? Officially, no. But then again, I don't. I, my purchasing of, of games on there is pretty benign. I mean, they're mostly online games. You know, not online games, but like you know, DLC and maybe uh, you know one of the indie games or one of the digital only games. But I've never had any reason to call up a customer service for PlayStation Network. Um, I have uh, called up customer service for you know for the PlayStation you know three in general you know to see if I can get it fixed, but that's about it. I don't think we're talking about customer service, Tony. That's what the question. That's what said. the question is. That's literally what I the said question said. Terms said. of service, didn't it? That's the same thing. No, it's not. No, it's terms not. of service no, is the thing yeah. that you it's agree the agreement to. policy. Yeah, and I have to say, I uh, here's he didn't here's say. Hold thing. on, he didn't say terms of service either. What exactly did he, he say? He said terms, but he didn't say terms of service. Okay, well, I, the, the terms does terms, not mean customer yeah. service. Terms yeah. means the shit that you agree to. And here's the thing, man. Like, while I agree that it may not be great terms, nobody's buying or, or nobody's really dealing with their purchasing power or directing the purchasing power based on the, the terms and agreements of the product. Like, nobody even reads that shit. I think more likely you're going to see that PlayStation users prefer physical copies because they're an older audience. Maybe, but can't you say the same thing about Xbox guys? Uh, to a certain extent, yeah, but I mean, I, I would say the demographic for, for PlayStation is a little higher, but it, regardless, the question, I think, should be more like, you know, we should be focusing more on the terms, not the customer yeah, service. It because sounds it's like not, the terms. It's, yeah, it's not yeah, customer service. Yeah, because he's the, talking about, um, you know, pre how you how yeah. you have to immediately pay for a pre order and you can't get refunds. So, do yeah, you not pay it, for a pre order? Does is is it not that way with Microsoft? I have no idea, but he's specifically talking about PlayStation. It's the same. It's the same. But the thing is, in the UK, there's an actual button on the PlayStation and on the Xbox to just automatically get a refund. Interesting. And that's not available here in the states. And I, that would be great yeah. to have, but it's not a it's not a law. It's a law over there in the UK. To, have the option for a uh, refund for digital purchases. Yeah, he did. I know Annihilator is from France, so I don't know how his loss are over there. Oh, so yeah, maybe it's a bit different. Maybe he's speaking yeah. about, about the terms of service within France, which is uh, you know, different. Yeah, it could be different there too. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we should definitely the PlayStation and Xbox. Xbox had it for a while and then they had to, they removed it because there was just too many issues with it, with people just complaining about, oh, well, I didn't really purchase this. And it's like, yeah, but you played it a bunch of hours. And then they argue about it. Instead of arguing, they just say, forget it. Here's take your money and walk <laughs> away. You know, so it, it's not a simple process. Yeah. But as uh, on the whole, though, like, and I'm not sure why it's targeted specifically at PlayStation, but yeah, like, I think a lot of us would agree that the terms in which you purchase a game are much more favorable if you buy a physical game. You have the option to resell it, you have the option to bail on your pre order. I mean, even a trash company like GameStop will let you walk in two days after your pre, two days after the game was released, if you never picked up your pre order and you're like, yeah, I want to put that credit towards something else they'll fucking let you i won't be happy with you but they'll let you like i've, I've straight up or uh, pre-ordered games at gamestop before and then never picked them up because i got them somewhere else 
And just be like, hey, uh, put that pre-order on something else. Put it, put it on something else. So I think in general, yeah, the terms are much more favorable for purchasing physical games over digital games. The only it the only thing better about digital games is the convenience. Yeah, yeah that's you true. Get, you, you, get, you don't need to wait on a line. You, you, get, you, know, you just go, you go in there and just make the, make the purchase. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, man, let's move on here to Mr. Matt Wheaton. So his first question we've answered before, but I'll just you know ask it, but we don't need to answer it because we've answered this in the okay. past. What are your favorite uh, stories in JRPGs? Uh, we've answered that before. You know, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, his next question, this is going to be interesting. Will we ever see an end to the whole Battle Royale thing? I think we'll see a slowdown, just like everything. Every yeah, board has I, a I, slowdown. I, I think the I think gets saturated. I think just like in the movies, whenever you know, whenever you you get you get to a point, oh, you, you, like Adam said, you get to an oversaturation point where everybody ends up doing it, and then people just start like, "Hey, man, is every fucking game that's out there going to be a, a battle royale game?" Y yeah. You know what I mean? I don't I think. think it, yeah, I don't think it'll. Rex, I think it'll yeah. wear. I don't think it. I think it'll wear out its welcome to an extent. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon because right now things are just ramping up. But I think you're right about that. I think the same thing that happened with um military FPS games is going to happen. They're still around. They still they're still being made, but they're not as rampant as I, they were last gen. You know, I think the the next phase will be uh, themed ones, themed battle royales, popular. Ooh. Like let's say like a Marvel one or a DC one or a GI Joe or you know big uh, where there's battle big Royale. catalogs. That would be <laughs> battle royale, say. battle royale. Yeah. yeah. See, so, you know, Adam has the idea. I think it's just kind of the same nature of the question of like, what happens if robots take over the world? Like, well, I don't know. Be a robot, and you don't have to worry about it. I, I, I think for the most part, battle royale will evolve into something else. It's a half baked game concept. It won't. It'll never go away. The same way, like, really, arena PvP never really went away. It just kind of changed and evolved over time. Yeah. I per I personally expect to see the next evolution where. They try and combine a hybrid of like an always on division or destiny type game with a battle royale where maybe they have a big open world map and the circle closes and everybody on the map, you know, if you're shooting bad guys or whatever, you're like, oh shit, it's a world event. Have to get to this point on the map and fight other players while I'm doing it. Um, but then they can go back and do whatever they want. Yeah. So are I, they I, go ahead. Or, or they could have like objectives and stuff. Like maybe like instead of one giant circle there's five giant circles like closing in and and each circle has different things you have to do i don't know like like it could evolve into something else easily mm -hmm. I, don't no, think, I just think it's going to get real themey, like sort of like what they were doing with FPSs, and that's what happened with that we wound yeah. up getting the toys and then we wound up getting of course the star wars battlefront and all that you know that's what people want to see those big brawls so bring it to other universes yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're we're not we're never gonna see an end to battle royale. I think it's here to stay. But I think you know the, the craze is definitely gonna diminish. Um, but it's definitely gonna go through some iterations first. But gu I guarantee you, it it ain't gonna go away anytime soon. So if you're tired of it, just suck it up. <laughs> it ain't going anywhere anytime I mean, soon, to, man. Just just like anything, don't buy it if you don't like it. That's it. Nobody's saying that you should. You know? Well, no. The problem is, you know, when you go on like spaces like Twitter and you have to constantly see this stuff, you know that that's a problem. Problem that I personally have, but you just got to deal with it. That's just how it is, man. You well, know. It, it, Hold on. It, what... To put stuff into perspective, though, like I, Tony, I just sent you a GIF of the, uh, or I sent Tony recently a video of the top fifteen games on Steam from twenty fifteen to today. That is fucking ridiculous, dude. <laughs> dude, Dota, Dota dominated dude. that shit. I mean, it just dominated, and it's it's still in second. Like if you watch, it's just Dota's just dominating, and finally PUBG knocks it down. But these games stay big forever just because Dota was huge. Yeah, you had a lot of clones. It was a craze for a while, and a lot of people still fucking play it to this day. But they, the gaming industry kind of – or they, the gaming industry as a, an organism kind of recognizes that, oh, here's a niche group. And then it just kind of moves on with the rest of the crowd. There's a reason even though you know, Dota was the biggest selling game that not every fucking game is Dota. Well, one of the things for for Dota and League of Legends and stuff like that is sort of the esports factor. I don't yeah. is, is, is uh, um, battle royale like huge when it comes. Oh to yes, esports? oh yes. Yeah, so that that might help it stay like for a while. 
Yeah, I guess we'll have to see, man. All right, um, moving on here, Mr. Axel Wolf. Um, Brett, these two questions are kind of for you, to be honest, since, you know, <laughs> you'll understand why. Um, I'm thinking about getting into some VR games. Don't know if you guys play VR, but if you do, and here's his first question, what are some must-play VR games? Oh, God damn it. Uh, I'll have to look up the name of the one. There's just one that recently came out. It's the, the robot game. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know anything about these what, fucking VR like games. Is it like 100-foot robot golf or something? No, no that was... give me a minute. Well, By the way, I, I, a, do, no, I do. Well, want to I would out, say yeah, I would ahead. I would say that one of them would probably uh, uh, one that has been called one of the best implementations. Astrobot. Uh, yeah, what is that? And there's also um, uh, the the Ready at Dawn game uh, that they, they did. You did. Say, do you say Astrobot? Yeah, that's the one you're thinking of, right? A Astrobot, yes, yeah. Astrobot or Astrobot. Um, let's see, super hot, fucking awesome. Uh, Job Simulator is a great uh, VR game for showing people who are new to VR. Um, it also it's it's fucking hilarious in kind of a Terry Pratchett Discworld kind of way. Uh, if you want to shit your pants, play the Resident Evil. The ready obviously. the Ready at Dawn game uh, uh, is called uh, Lone Echo. Uh, Lone Echo. By the way, shout out to the guys in the chat get, get throwing out names. Um, Beat Saber. I was um, about to say Beat Saber. Holy shit, Beat Saber. Yeah, um, Super Hot. Yep, Super uh, Hot. Tetris VR, that, that's out. Ooh, I didn't even know that was... Is that... So, all they, all they put Tetris. I don't know if he's played it, all but... Day is that all day digital. All day, man. Is it, <laughs> is it better than uh, Super Hypercube? Because it's that's kind of a Tetris-ish game, too. So, I wonder what the difference is between both of those. Probably the insanity level. Lone Echo... Is one of the better visual VR games. Yeah, um, there was another VR game. It was a, it was an FPS game that I played. I thought that was kind of fun, but I, I totally don't know the fucking name. Zero something, I think it was. Oh, thing was the name of that fucking game, bro. Point. No, not far. Maybe it was far point. It could have been. I, who the fuck knows? Resident Evil Seven. <laughs> Yo, Tony, what was that VR game you played where you're underwater? Remember the one you said you felt like you were drowning? Um, the one with the dinosaurs. Uh, was that it? Yeah, firewall. Thank you all. See, all day he knows his shit, man. Uh, uh -huh. No, no, I don't. I don't. The one that was underwater was yeah, it was like basically that was the whale one. Yeah, you, like you're underwater with in like prehistoric times with prehistoric monsters. That shit was. I do not recommend that. That shit is scary. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but maybe that. maybe people want that experience. You don't um, know. I also have to say I'm not sure what any any driving game that looks interesting to you is going to be an entirely new experience in VR. I, I feel like. If you're if you're getting a VR headset and you like driving games even a little bit, um, or racing games even a little bit, the, VR is is honestly one of those things where the technology makes the game better than any other medium. Um, Farpoint is a really good one too. And if you want to, if you have like the move controllers and want to hold a gun and like move around and like shoot things kind of thing, if you want that experience, uh, that works really well. Yeah, there's a bunch of them, man. Yeah, um, yeah, Firewall, pa Pavlov, or Onward, if you're into military FPS games. Damn, Munishin, man, you know your stuff, bro. It's awesome. Wipeout VR is good. All right, cool. Um, keep naming them, guys. And then the next question, should I buy an Oculus Rift or a PSVR? Oculus Rift. Ooh, yeah, I, w I would say go with the, especially that new Oculus Rift. Yeah, the new one. The new one, like, you don't even need, like, sensors and shit like that. Like, it per it does it just all from the helmet. Mm, yeah. That's the buttery goodness. Um, the, the, if you're thinking about PSVR, here's here's the, the honest truth. They'll be releasing some sort of new headset with the PS5. Um, or, at the very least, the PSVR would run way better on the PS5, but I'm it, if you look at the specs of the the PSVR, it it's meant to be a consumer model, but it's not a mass consumer kind of thing. It is it is testing new technology, and they're going to make it better. But uh, you know that that being said, when you look at it, you can tell this is not the first iteration. They're kind of following Oculus's footsteps, and since that thing's been released, there's been huge leaps forward. So, but 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 I mean, at least for the time, from from the improvements from the the com you know how comfortable the headset is compared to the Oculus, you know the older Oculus things, it's like it did feel like at least that section of it did feel like 
it felt more consumer producty than the original than the older versions of the Oculus Rift, even the ones that existed around the same time that the PSVR came out. Have you tried the new version? No, I haven't seen it, but oh. I've, I've saw some new I saw some new uh, some new stuff on the new one, and they just just the advancements in that one. Just like I, I mean, if it's I was amazing. ever interested, if I was ever interested in VR, I would definitely go with that one because of just how well a lot of the stuff is in it. Nope, I, I yeah. agree. Uh, Oculus, Oculus is uh, it's essentially a generation ahead of PSVR at this time, and PSVR didn't it hasn't really seen a huge price drop so normally it would become more accessible but at at this point i think it's a better value to buy psvr also on top of what uh you know just kind of on this discussion um i wanted to point out so oculus and sony are you know neck and neck uh well not neck and neck but they're both vying over the virtual reality market meanwhile microsoft just sold theirs to the u.s military instead which i find hilarious well, wasn't that the um the the eye thing that they sold? The, the, yeah, the, the Hololens. Thing? The Hololens is being converted into an augmented reality targeting system to increase lethal lethality on the battlefield. Wow! Hey man, See, that, that, hey, hey, that, man. that goes back hey. to what I'm saying. Like VR is going to be really good in other applications besides games. Military application is perfect for VR. You know, so that but that's I mean, that's very smart really to doing using, that. They're not using VR; they're using AR, which is oh, yeah, AR. Reality. Yeah, yeah, right. But you know what I'm saying? That that sort of technology. I, we talked about this before. It was like with gaming. I'm like, I don't know about all that, but with other fields, oh hell yeah, you're going to see that everywhere. AR and VR. You know. But see, that's the thing. That's how P- PCs weren't developed to game on. PCs were developed to work on, and then yeah. games were developed for them. Like that's that's the parachute that will always keep VR from dying, and the reason it's going to definitely stay around. Like if it was if it were just gaming, yeah, it might have died in the cradle. But it's going to be. It's already being adopted into so many training programs that it's just going to become a tool that's around. And if there's a tool, people will find a way to play with it. So huh. I, that's I- why. How come no everybody hasn't gotten you know a lot of people haven't gotten all pissy about that? Oh, this video game company selling selling technology to kill people faster. I honestly don't know if a lot of people know about it. I know there's a lot of the people who develop the Hololens are super pissed, and they're basically saying that they they they're tr- there've been people who quit over it. And they're they're they wrote a letter to Microsoft that says, "Do not put our our, our technology in a product to." kill other humans <laughs> well yeah. like, eh. unfortunately unfortunately when they the minute that they they uh they they signed that contract to work at that job that they don't have any sort of uh, uh over con- any control over what their uh, parent company actually does with that shit so sorry no, it's, guys it's true yeah. and actually i i didn't want to add a question but just real quick i want to ask like how do you guys even feel about a game company making weapons i have no problem with it makes that's fine you know, got to make your money. I have no problem with that. I mean, here's the thing: like, officially, you know, um, Microsoft is not a game company solely. So, yeah, they're a technology they can, company. Yeah. They're a technology yeah. company, and obviously, any of their technology, they, if they need to make some money off of it, they can sell it to the U.S. government or to whoever else they want to to make the money that they want. So, unfortunately, you know, that's that's the one thing. It's like, you know, you you start making these things with the best of intentions, but then you open all these other doors. This is why we can't have nice things, people. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man, let's move on here. Uh, again, we got a lot of stuff. Actually, this is not a question, just a little bit of a follow up. He goes, because um, he asked us he asked us about Xbox Game Share last week and most of us were like, we so he goes, Xbox Game Share is like a family share program where you and someone else can share all digital games and DLC. So if I buy a game, my friend also gets it. If he buys something, I get it as well. Isn't that, I mean, that's that's what they originally talked about. Like, it didn't, didn't, didn't like, I know Adam was talking about yeah. it. It was, yeah. it was a variation it of that where within yeah. 30 days. And But the other cool thing with that, well, yeah, I guess this is actually a little better before they were talking about where you give your key pretty much 30 days and then let's say if i don't want to play call of duty anymore i can give you the key and you can start playing i still own it but i can't play it as long as you're playing it yeah, yeah. the the, so. the reason he asked that is because he just wanted to know why people weren't talking about it and i think it's because a lot of people don't know about it there's this guy like most of us here own xboxes we didn't even know about it like okay you know i mean to, to me when i heard first when i heard him talking about it, i'm like didn't they already talk about that when it originally came out that the game sharing yeah. that was yeah. one of the said, things that they, they said they took it away because we weren't we we it was one of those like you guys weren't good so we took away your good your 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 feature like it wasn't a thing 
I'm pretty somebody correct me if I'm wrong. This wasn't a thing on the like this was in, implemented later, right? No, it was. It was, it was always there. It was, was there. Yeah. Right at the beginning, they yeah. were advertising. Yeah, in the yeah. Beginning, yeah. Well, yeah. I remember right at the beginning they were advertising it, but then they had to backpedal on their whole message thing, and I thought that's one of the things that got lost when they cut the always online capabilities. No, well, it's that always was linked there. to it because yeah. it had to verify the keys. And that's why they required it always online. So I had to make sure that that key wasn't being duplicated. So that's why you always had to be online. Yeah, no, I I thought that was why. And I thought that was, I thought one of the biggest criticisms for people who were actually a fan of Microsoft's original uh, strategy or roadmap was that if you guys had just gone along with it, we'd all be able to digitally share games right now. I thought that was the thing for the first couple of years of the Xbox Live. And it seems to me that this feature then kind of just quietly rolled out. It, if that's not the case, and this has just been a feature from release, then I can tell you a lot of us heard otherwise, because a lot of us heard that when Microsoft changed their game plan, that this wasn't on the table anymore. It was one of those things that was a casualty of losing, or we were losing it because we didn't want to have an always online console. Without an always online console, Microsoft wasn't going to do this, so it got left on the cutting room floor. So do we know for a fact that this has been there since launch? Well, I don't know. He says he's been using it since launch. Okay. Well, yeah. then that that in I think that answers your question. There was a lot of uh, talk going around, and did, any, uh, did anybody else hear that? Was anybody else under this impression that I, the feature? I just didn't really remember it? some some something not maybe not that game share ability, but something saying some some part of it saying that yeah, because we this we moved these the the you know the the, the DRM or whatever you know the calling home ability that now you guys don't have some of these features. Yeah, but that specifically, I think everybody just thought they threw out the baby with the bathwater, but they didn't. That feature was always there. It's interesting, but I think that's it's, probably it, why um, it, a lot of people thought it wasn't there. I I feel like I just... Or don't know, know it's their period. Well, it's you know? definitely something they don't advertise. They don't, no, they they don't never never. talk about that. Yeah, they, they never, never do. You're right about, about that. that. It but, was, uh, it was yeah. an issue. Like, yeah, the only time I remember hearing about that is when... They initially started, you know, we're talking about X, you know, Xbox One. It's like, oh, hey, you know, you can share it with your friends and share it with your family. But I'm like, I think, like, I think in general, Microsoft's messaging on that thing is just, you know, hui hua, you know, it's just all over the place. And it's not, it's, it doesn't tell you what you got. Yeah. All right, man, let's move on here. Um, Where the hell are we? Johnny Uppercut goes, what's up, fellas? I hope all is well with you guys. Well, yes, it is. Thank you. All right, so his only question is, we as gamers have seen many game studios close due to bad management or poor sales. My question is, which now closed game studios had the potential to make a great game if they were still around today? Uh, well, I, I would say uh, I was with... looking forward to, t to Telltale doing uh, Wolf Among Us 2 because I, like, I had liked the first one. I think it's a shame what happened to them. You know, that was mismanaged right into the ground. It's like one day they were fine, and one day they were just laying off everyone. I, I, the, the, the thing is, I don't think they were ever fine. <laughs> well, no, they weren't they, it's fine, but they weren't, yeah. they weren't yeah. fine. They know? seemed but, fine. But I, I think because, I, you know what, uh, the biggest issue with those guys is that, you know, when you license things out, when you when you license products, that means you got to pay companies for the, the rights to those things. And I think because they decided to get in bed with all these different franchises, they were mm -hmm. paying more money out than they were taking in on the yeah. games that they were creating. They just yeah. assumed all those licenses were bringing buco bucks and it didn't Exactly. Happen. It's like, hey, we got Minecraft, we got Marvel, we got DC, everybody. Yeah, Borderlands. And yeah. yeah. But anyway, with the question, I think if Visceral Games would have been out, they would have put out a, a pretty good Star Wars game. That's not happening anymore, you know. Yeah, unfortunately. Another Dead Space. We'll never oh get that. yeah, dude. Yeah, that was my thing. The Dead Space visceral. That would be good. What other studios? This has been a lot of them that's been closed. But it is a little speculating because, like, we don't know if they would have put out another good game. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, was it a? Uh... Was it uh, was it Lionhead? I want to say it's Lionhead, but I don't think it's Lionhead. The, um, the, 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 yeah. the Fable, Peter, Fable yeah. series, yeah, Fable. Because uh, that that would have. Well, I would have liked to see the finished Fable they were working on. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's a tough one. Shout yeah. out to uh, Bioware and uh, Dragon Age Four. 
Oh shit! <laughs> man, you, yeah, man, you, you're already signing their death certificate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have a question about that. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Um, the studio that made the saboteur. Oh yeah, whatever happened? That's oh, right. Saboteur. Saboteur. I yeah. was trying. I was going to play that the other day again because I never finished it, and I had the, the I was, DLC code where you get to see all the, the yeah. naked ladies. Brian, what was the, the name of the studio? I thought it was Pandemic. Pandemic Studios. That's Pandemic, right. Yeah. 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 Pandem- yeah. Like I, I actually was interested in that game, the saboteur, but then I just saw some stuff about it and I was like, oh man, this is sad because this was a kind of a cool idea. Yeah, Sabedor. What other? Who was the company that made Mercenaries? People like those games. They're not oh, around yeah. anymore, right? It is, it is Pandemic. I, it is pa- Damn. I think that was Pandemic as well. Wow, Pandemic, man, pour one out. Uh, no, another victim by EA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, so I, have, I have the game right here. IGN.com Best of E3 Winner 2009. Wow. Yeah. That was a fun one. It was deep. Had a good story. World War Two, the French Rebellion group. It was cool. That's yeah, and it had, that, it had that aspect where you like, as you freed the different locations, it would uh, uh, the um, the color would come back. Yeah, because the game was like in black and white, but yeah, mm-hmm. the, the it, board, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it had a, a very Assassin's Creed feel. You can climb walls and do those type of things with a hook and, and navigate around it. Uh, the burlesque. If you put in a code, you got the code. To, you can uh, see everybody naked and stuff. It was kind of interesting at the brothels and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm having a hard time um, answering this one. I can't think of any other studios because you already took mine. Mine was Dead Space because that's one I yeah, missed. Visceral man. man. Yeah, bring that. Sh- oh, man. I mean, uh, I mean, you know what? Yeah. It's it's a weird nostalgia with that because the later versions it started getting all wacky. Three had some cool ideas with adding uh, co-op play, but the story was all out there. It just it lost that feel, you know, that the first one had in the first, then even the second one. You know, you know, the one thing about that one that I always thought was kind of cool about that version of Dead Space Three, where the two-player co-op thing, where essentially you have the two characters playing through the game, but one character it sees things that the other character doesn't see. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so one guy could be going losing his mind going crazy he's like yo man did you see that he's like no he, he's the only guy that saw that uh, i finished that recently maybe like last year early last year me and a buddy of mine we did on uh the xbox because it was backward compatible and we both had it so we're like oh and we had the digital so we just played it mm-hmm. went through it um, i mean I, I got one um although it's a little bit of a cop-out because they now exist as another studio are you uh, saying Kojima Productions? No, Clover. <laughs> Clo- yeah, Clover. Pla- Clover is essentially yeah. platinum now, but yeah, Clover. You know, um, you know, they had Okami. You know, beautiful Joe. Beautiful Joe. Joe. Great um, fucking studio, man. God Hand too. You yeah, know. Yeah, God Hand. Um, but yeah, Ko- Kojima Productions. <laughs> you can say Kojima Productions, whatever they had, and they, 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 yeah. Come on, what were they developing? Silent Hills. The, oh yes oh yeah oh that hurts that hurts that hurts that's crazy all right any any other studios you guys want to bring up irrational games the makers of bioshock oh shit that's right they're not around yeah, they're, they're not around anymore uh and whatever what's his face is working on now ken levine yeah he he he's still trying to make that um replayable narrative game isn't he like he's been talking about that for yeah. years now you know yeah and he still hasn't cracked it. It's like a Gordian knot. He doesn't know how to fucking untie it. <laughs> it's crazy. He just needs to just he, he just needs to just make Epcot, man, because uh, <laughs> he ain't gonna be making the original. He he just needs to make Epcot Center. He can't make it, the original Epcot. So now he's just got to make a, a, a close enough uh, replicate of it. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, man. Um, next up, Mr. Sketch. I moved this up the line here because it's kind of related to the question we just had. He all he all, he did ask us about um, what we think about E3 existing, but we've talked about that many times, so we don't need mm-hmm. to go over that. Uh, we may revisit it again when E3 comes around. Um, but his question is: uh, Do you guys feel that the failure of AAA games falls on the developers or the publishers? Uh, it's 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 a, it's a slippery slope because it's, it can be both sides. Yeah. It's well, if anything, we could blame one publisher and one game, and that's Call of Duty and Activision Mm -hmm. because that brought brought in Buko Bucks, and then everybody was like, We want that, we want to bring that. How do we do it? Well, to make money, you know, you got to put in money. It's like, All right, then let's put in the money. 
But then when these big titles come out, and if they don't live up to the hype, then you lose big. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of losing here. I I would say like it, it's it's a little bit of both. Sometimes you have uh, you have a a game that has all the all the you know the, the you know the publishers force behind it that you got a thousand commercials on everything and you know every, you know they, everybody's all hyped about the game and then when the game comes out it's like oh geez watchdogs you know, yeah we got watchdogs <laughs> yeah exactly you got watch and they're dogs. bringing it back they continue to i'm really surprised i'm really surprised it's the third one coming really yeah well. that's the one for london <laughs> the one they teased in the game remember at the end of yeah. the game they teased it yeah what oh. would you say brett <laughs> Said I am shocked as well. Yeah, I'm like okay. Hey, listen, Watch Dogs Two was a good game, you know. Um, I do feel like yeah. I do feel like it, it in a way it kind of suffered from the the legacy of the yes. previous. No. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, you, you not? yeah, that that's a big albatross around your neck, man. Or, because here's yeah. a, here's the here's the weirdo thing. Because obviously the last Watch Dog games, even known in the last Watch Dog game, it did well. It did well because of based on the reputation. LA, it's the first next gen game. It's the first thing we ever saw that was considered next gen, and then people all everybody bought it. I bought that shit. Yeah, the game. Then, the, yeah, the game sold like crazy out the out the gate because everybody expected it to be crazy. But you know, but it it didn't look the way they showed it off. No. That thing looked amazing. That game looked amazing. It's not the first time that Ubisoft has done this. They did it with the division. You know, at that E three, that looked amazing. Yeah. And even when it came out on PC, it didn't even look like that. Um, yeah. I oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, man. Oh, I gotta say the developers. In all oh, cases, because I I think it's like uh, but case ninety nine percent of the cases, yeah, I interesting. Don't know, because you know, if a, if a publisher doesn't give a developer enough time to do a game, you know, there's yeah. there's been situations of that happening where potentially yeah. decent games got got squashed by the by 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 rising uh you know publisher uh demands. Yeah, yeah, Brett, Red Dead Redemption Two pretty... online. Oh shit! I, I, yeah. Go ahead, Brett. No, that the Red Dead Redemption Two Online is fucking Rockstar's. Fault. Yeah, Rockstar. Fu- that's a that's the publisher fucked that up. You know that that that. Okay, by the way, Brett, I'm obviously I'm gonna let you answer, but I'm on the upper, opposite, and I think most of the time it's the publisher that fucks things wait, up. But anyway, wait, go ahead. The publisher fuck it's up Rock and Red Dead Online because well, they it, it, be, take it's take two. Oh, fault. take two. Yeah, take two's fault because basically they told Rockstar, hey, you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna put in all this other crazy microtransactiony shit in there. And then Rockstar was like, okay, so we got to prevent people from making money online, so we got to take away all the features that made the single player dope, like you know, being able to rob stores or gamble or all this other shit. Every single thing that's wrong, not to go down the rabbit hole but every single thing that's wrong with red dead online comes back to the microtransaction shit you want to have you want to have fun you want to have fun you got to pay for it that that or how about the fact that 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 they released red dead redemption 2 without the online ready that's That's not the developer's fault fault. yeah that is not the developer's fault that's that's and tony i would i would say this yeah that uh the it is not the uh, i still lay the blame on the developer when they fi- fail to find a creative or acceptable solution to a problem. And this is coming from that's somebody like that's not fair. That's not fair. That's, that's, that's like blaming you for, for having some, for, for, for somebody having a bad, uh, uh, a bad tattoo idea. Yeah. yeah. So if, I, I, and, and, if somebody and comes up with a bad tattoo idea and I execute it knowing it's going to end poorly, that's on me. It's my job to either figure out a way to you make it work. No, combine. Brett. If somebody comes up to you with a bad tattoo idea and you only have 10 minutes to do it, that's not your fault. That's their fucking fault. Putting those crazy constraints on you, man. Then I yeah, don't accept the job. But, Brett, you well, don't have a, you have a choice. The, yeah, yeah, don't. Well, wait, they don't. Wait, wait, like, that's that's yeah, go ahead. exactly the point, Brett. You, you can do that. Like uh, as uh, you, you're you, as an entrepreneur yourself, you can choose like, hey, that's stupid. I'm not going to do that to you. You need to rethink this tattoo, right? The guys at Rockstar they don't have that choice, right? When when Take Two comes down on them and say the shareholders are pissed, we need to uh, monetize this game as much as possible, and we need to hit this release date, and they yeah. can't do it. What what do they do? They're not given any more resources to do it. They're just told just, this has to happen. Yeah, you said yourself, they can't do it. And that's that's where, it, yeah, you they may be asking the impossible to a certain extent, but when they say we want to make more money out of this, it was Rockstar's choice to go and to figure out how to go about doing it. Take Two didn't make them go in and remove all the features from the single player game, uh, or from the multiplayer game that were in the single player game. That was Rockstar's no, choice. Yeah, but it's because of Take Two's. But it's because of what Take Two. Yeah, understand? I get that, yeah. but at the same time, like 
I get that causality begins with the developer with the with the publisher, but the developer has ways to go about doing this. I've seen microtransactions in games that are fair and balanced. I've seen ones that are broken and fucked up. And I, I don't think that Take Two is so far up Rockstar's ass. They're telling them how to do their day to day business. And the way that the way that Rockstar chose to do a lot of that stuff is the stuff that pissed me off about about the game. The ori- the origins of the the idea, sure, started with the the developer. But all the things that pissed me off, those were thought up and implemented within Rockstar. Yeah, not but again, Take-Two. because of Take Two's crazy demands, it all comes back to that. You know? Yeah. When you have an overlord, you can't yeah. you can't you can't like just think on your own and and. and pull stuff out of your ass you know right if the, if the head of rockstar said hey um these are these are bad ideas from the top we're not going to monetize the game we're going to allow people to do pretty much what they do in single player multiplayer we're going to put in poker and all this stuff guess what somebody gets fired for that yeah they're going to go no this is not what we wanted we're not generating revenue whose head do we chop off to uh, and and get this you're, back and you're on saying track. the head of rockstar can't go to 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 take two and say the business plan you put in front of us isn't going to work. The the game, the, this roadmap is impossible. This is never going to happen, and you're going to end up releasing a broken product if you if you push us down this road. I don't think that happens because games get pushed back all the time, right? I believe that yeah, the source of the evil does start with people like Day Two, but it's not like they're 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 saying, look, this game has to be out on this time, or it or you're fucked. They get the original roadmap. They get the t- original timeline from the developers they don't just say like you have five years to develop this game go they go to the developers and they say okay we want something this scale this big this big what's our roadmap how long do we think this is going to take and they break it down to phases yeah but, they get but roadmap, ro- roadmaps change like there's things uh there's always problems like feature creep and whatnot that that gets into games so when you make your original roadmap and you say we're going to need four years to develop this original plan and then uh, Take Two has board meetings all the all the time, every quarterly report, whatever. And they go, we've got feedback from the board, and we have ideas. And they say, you need to implement this in the game now. You need to implement that. Two years in, you need to now add this, right? Then guess what? Now your feature set has grown, and now the time needed to implement it has grown. Like th- this happens all the time. So you Did can't you- say they said four years; they have to hit four years. That never happens. Never happens in software development. No, and I and I understand that. It just this whole thing strikes though like seems like okay, I want you to build a house, and I'm going to give you X amount of wood, and then I come back three months later, and I'm like, dude, this house looks like shit. And like, well, you didn't give me enough wood. Why didn't you plan on building a house that would utilize the amount of fucking wood that I gave you in the timetable that I gave you? And like, I. I, and this is just me being fair because honestly, like uh, take Manny for instance. If somebody comes to Manny and says, you have four weeks to do a six-week job and I'm only going to pay you standard rate, if Manny gets that done, it's because he's an awesome artist. It's because he managed to do this. And if he did that where somebody else couldn't, I view that as their shortcomings. Not necessarily shortcomings, but it's a place where Manny would be better than the other person because he's able to do it in this timeline. Here's the thing, though. You're, you're, you're talking. You're hold on, hold on, hold on. You're talking about. You're talking about individuals now, Brett. Like when you're dealing with like massive, like a massive publisher with developers that are like a thousand strong, it gets a little bit trickier. You have to abide but, what your master says. You know what I'm saying? Master, and, 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 you guys think you guys act like it's just, an, 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 you know, take two walks in there and like there's nobody in charge at Rock. Rockstar. Like, there's not a top to that pyramid. There's not a president of Rockstar. There is, and they're ultimately beholden to take two and their shareholders. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. They're 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 taking or the head of Rockstar is taking orders from the head of, yeah. head of take two. Or guess, but, but, yes, but, like the Housers cannot go. Like uh, they in Sam Houser cannot go to take two and say. We can't do what you say because you know what? At the next board meeting, they get voted out as president of the company and then they'll get replaced. They're like, you can't do the job. We'll find someone else who does. Basically, what they're saying is we won't we're not going to take no for an answer. This is how most companies work. They're not going to take no for an answer. They have a, a product roadmap. You can't meet it. We'll find somebody the, else who will meet it. The, the head of Amazon India is not going to tell Jeff Bezos what to do. Yeah. That's as simple as that. Like. If 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 you can't if you can't do what what they want you to do, then you're out. And that's what usually happens in the industry. It's like if you if 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 something happens, like 
I don't know, it, like if let's say Red Dead Redemption 2 is like the worst selling Rockstar game in, in over two decades, heads were fucking roll. And I'm going to say this, and we, you know, a good example of, of the situation is, is, uh, as our good buddies at, uh, uh, you know, uh, at, um, at, what was it? Bioware, right? Oh yeah. That like Anthem, you know why that game exists. The, Anthem it, that, that, Anthem, that, the only reason why as a, only, as a labor of love, I could tell you that. You the know? only reason why, <laughs> the only know? reason why Anthem, re, Anthem existed the state that it does and why the last Mass Effect game existed at the state that it, that it did is because somebody at EA said, listen, Destiny, make us one of those. Whatever you have to do. Pull, pull, uh, you know, pull, you know, you, you, everybody loves Mass Effect, so you don't need to have the A team on that shit. They're going to love that, whatever you do. So do this anthem thing. Yeah, look how that turned out, you know. But anyway, uh, again, we still got a lot of questions here. Um, there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of situ there's a lot it's it's sad there's a lot of situations that are like that where the big guy at the top of the uh, yeah. uh, top of the food chain is telling the, the you know telling the companies oh yeah you got to do this by this but yes it's not that's not also to say that the developers are not at fault as well where it's where they you know it, you know where it, again we we talk about that specific Mass Effect game where there was a total other version of the game that they wanted to make but they couldn't because of whatever happened. Yeah, you know? I, I think it's more 80 20 publisher to developer. I think, issues. yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, publisher 80% to develop because developers yeah. to blame too. Like, for example, yeah. uh, Devil May Cry 4, who well, I'm not blaming the publisher for you know half the game being a repeat, that's on the developer, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Don't mind spoilers, yeah. <laughs> there's, 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 there's broken things, and then there's there's uh, there's there's uh, uh, publisher and, and and shareholder driven incentives that uh, ruin things. And look at EA. EA is replete with that uh, Battlefront 2 with the loot boxes. Um, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, the recent uh, thing with uh, the recent Anthem. And Anthem is still a, a debacle. I know, I, uh, Brett, I know you enjoy it, but they're not handling that game well. I, there was a story I, I saw today about a guy who was banned from the game for, for farming um, op the open world loot boxes. And he was getting good drops from them. Now that to me is not he's not cheating. He's just he's like, okay, I'm gonna farm, I'm getting good drops from these, I'm gonna keep farming them. Well eventually they looked at his account, they banned him. I find that story dubious and hard to believe. I feel like there's something missing there. Yeah, anyway, man, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't hear yeah. him exploiting. I think he's a streamer too. He was streaming it uh, uh, and showing people how to get that stuff, and they banned him. That's probably why they banned no, him. That's why they banned him. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop yeah. showing us. The, yeah. They have shown more people your but tricks. But that's not the right way to yeah. handle. No, that. it's, it's not. not good no, it's consumer not. relations. Like you know that 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 in a game that's already hurting, you're gonna start doing that, especially to people who are like. E EA streamers or you know looter shooters or whatever like promoting the game yeah now you banned them like that's fucked up yeah. they're gonna win that award again man worst company in America all right let's move on here Mr Black Metal Gamer uh, with gaming going into this always online service based route do you see Nintendo Capcom and Sega being the saving grace for single player games if so will you only play nintendo next generation that last part of the sentence is a question is kind of weird but let's get to that uh yeah capcom and sega you know they are actually doing a pretty good job with that um but here's the thing despite what ea tells you single player games aren't going to go anywhere you know you may not get as many of them as you used to but they're not going to go anywhere so i don't think these companies specifically are going to be the only saviors but um you should definitely watch out for their games because they do a good job with those you know I still think that whole thing is being taken out of context. I think what they're trying to say is that it's not going to be the big money maker that it used to be. Like it's all about multiplayer now. It's still going to make everybody, money. Everybody knows that. Yeah, but well, that's it. But I think everyone's taking it the wrong way. We all know that. But that's not how people are, are spreading the news. They're like, oh, you see, they're saying it's dead. It's not that it's dead. It's just not the king of the hill anymore. It's multiplayer. I mean, platforming is dead. I mean, like, it, there's so many ways to take that. Honestly. I think, yeah, to, to be a little scary, single player is going to die. Fucking get used to it, people. Like, But that doesn't mean that all the things that made up single player are going to die. Intense nar narrative-driven experiences, um, uh, big cinematic set pieces. The difference is they might just be plugged into instances of more online games where people that can then take that, that 
character and go do something else. Problem with an, a single player game is you put it down. Whereas if you allow that person to go from a single player game into an open world or a multiplayer world at the end of that, it keeps them engaged and keeps selling the product. Here, Nowhere here. does that necessarily mean, does that necessarily mean that you have to lose the elements that make the single player game good though? Um, well, the other thing, the other thing, always online doesn't exactly mean it needs to be a, a, a multiplayer sort of environment. Um, let us not forget that the current Resident Evil 2 game has to be online. No matter what, you can't play that game w without being yeah, online. Yeah, and that's some bullshit too. Yeah, the RE yeah, net. Yeah, that's yeah, it has to be connected to RE net in order for the game to run. Uh, by the way, there's another Capcom game that's coming out soon that I just finished playing. That also, even though it's single player, needs to be online. I can't say the name of the game, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Also runs on RE. And, and also, yeah. also, yeah. Also, let me also add, Cap. This is not the first instance of Capcom doing this. A certain, uh, what is it? Magic Sword slash Final Fight. Uh, you know, Final Fight Double Impact. Remember that game? That yes. game also had to constantly be online for some fucking reason. Yeah. By the way, Kingdom uh, Hearts. I had the same problem with Kingdom Hearts when um my online was being funky. The game started running weird. It's a single player, full single player game. You know, it's I think way, yeah. more about the loss of a single player game. Yeah, but I, I think you're right. But within the age of a service based game, like not not talking about single player games being online he's talking about like as gaming becomes more of a service he's afraid that single player games are going to disappear yeah yeah that that's the yeah. heart of the question um go ahead with carlos single player games aren't going to disappear they're not, they're not, not all developers no. can afford to implement a whole multiplayer aspect of their game so the, no uh, it's not the the switch the switch's best selling games are pretty much single player like yeah, most I'm... of them are. shit we're still getting 16 big games <laughs> you know on the switch new yeah. ones so yeah it's like yeah, Witcher, and Horizon, obviously, God of War, Spider Man, those are all great selling games. Yeah, and, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. You know, we may just not get as many of them because right now the the games that do make the most money are the the multiplayer games for obvious and, reasons. And and, and not, yeah. let's also let's also say this. I'm I'm sure I don't know how how what the differences is within multiplayer games are, but obviously they don't need to spend as much I would think on a multiplayer type of game than they would on a full on you know high fidelity slash um, single player game. Uh, I agree. I, with don't that. Know. I agree with that. I I I, I kind of see multiplayer games as like the the reality TV show of video games. Like they're you know they're oh, not that they're no. not that cheap. To, you know they're cheap to produce, I, but they get a lot of money what? in return. No, you know? no, 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 no. Tony, I actually it's highly the other disagree way with that. Wow, you guys well, got yeah. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I actually like highly disagree with that because um, I think you're just considering the initial launch behind it. But if you consider like the upkeep and the updates that get put behind it. I think it actually edges out to more. But uh, again, here, like, but here, but games here, aren't just out and then like, hey, they're out in the wild. That's it. We won't touch them ever again. It's like, hey, it's out in the wild. Okay, cool. We'll do an update every month, every two here's months, the, every here's three months. The thing, new here's content, the, new releases, new stuff still be made. Here's the thing. Um, unlike uh, like the comic industry, that initial investment is usually made by the studio, but it's the day-to-day -day stuff that keeps it running. So officially, the, they didn't spend a lot of money to initially develop the thing, but the day to day of of constant micro microtransactions and all that other sort of stuff that keeps the game. Yeah, that's a good. I, 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 yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, you're right. Well, let me let me let me, whoa, 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 let me finish. I think you guys are right. I didn't think about that part. The part that you have to keep constantly putting money into it to keep it going. Because I was just thinking about the initial investment. Because think about it, what's this? It was an online game. You get a bunch of dudes, throw them in a read, and let them fuck each other up. Like that. That, that doesn't sound as like. Well, you know, no. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me yeah. finish. That doesn't sound as deep as like you know getting voice actors the script all this other stuff you know, to make a proper story but you're right about that over the years look at warframe they've had to put a lot of money into that shit to keep it going you know so yeah i you know i i'll say i'll i'll back off my statement even though i think it's a good statement because it's like you know it's sound bitey <laughs> it's a reality i think show, i but, think yeah. here's the thing i i think the, the thing is that it's like you it's uh, the way it's made a lot of you guys are making this sound is like oh like there's they're initially making that you know they're just continuing to put money in there's still the money that's coming in from the microtransactions within the the game the only reason why you can continue to have those games uh, continue to play within the, the future is because somebody out there is still continuing to pay for the content that is continuing to go there. So yeah, it, all, it all it all breeds off of itself. But then that's still cost, though. Like it's still cost, the, but it's not the initial that the that initial a cost of the, the initial investment the initial investment off of the game originally 
is probably not as much, but throughout the future to continue to continue to keep the profit to keep the game going, that is what continues to keep it to keep it sailing. In other words, I, I thought, that's why I use the comic industry as as an example. So, you know, I've worked at Marvel Comics or DC. The initial investment made by that company, you know, to get us all on staff to to to, to get that it's in, to get that first issue out. That's their initial investment. Each subsequent issue is paid off by the previous one. So, which is why we always say buy your single issues as opposed to waiting for the graphic novel. Same thing, same situation here. When you're in, we were talking about a video game, uh, you know, online video game or whatever like that. They've made that additional uh, investment on uh, on the beginning, and that the con they continue to sail based off of the profits from the pre from the from uh, from the previous cycle to continue I it. Wrong, I think you're wrongly assuming that the investment in a, a, a multiplayer game is less than the investment of a single player game, because it's not. A multiplayer game requires is is it highly more resource intensive. It requires more assets. It requires more developers. It's harder to develop for one, even down to the whole. You're only rendering a single cone of vision in a single player game. You can be as sloppy as your fucking coding as you want, but if you want a multiplayer game to look good, your tight your coding has to be tight because you have to render an entire environment plus multiple people plus equalizing well, inventory across different. different well, no, not you're you're, you're 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 the way you're making it sound like is like every single uh, like there it's all being rendered on what somebody else's engine on somebody no, else's thing. They're all they're all being rendered. They're all being rendered on your end. And all that's being sent to your side of the thing is just the data of the location data of where that character currently is. Uh, yeah, except for they also have to have a main hub that's keeping track of where all the characters are in relation to each other, where all the loot that has been dropped and all the drop points are, where all the collections are, where all the enemies are in relation to all those people. It has to keep track of exponentially more things than in a single player game. A single player game, and this is why I'm, I'm more arguing with Tony's original statement, like, like if you want to talk about a cheap game, a cheap game is a cinematic single player corridor shooter because you have to put very little once you get the basic yeah, mechanics. But down, what do you need to do? You, well, need to about, get a, you, need to, oh, you need to get a director, you need to get a writer, you need to get actors like that's and more also let's, let, let, let us talk game. about fidelity. Yeah. Uh, online yeah. game does not have this. I'm sorry, the online game does not have the same fidelity as a single player game because, because it's more resource intensive. That's my point. If it were easy, if it were easier and cheaper to make a a multiplayer game you would think that they would rise to the level if it was e so games. okay so we'll explain the, this first generation of uh, when we first started this generation what was every single game that we saw out there uh was an online shooters. shooter friggin evolved online shooter. All, you know, was was uh was a uh, titanfall it was these games that why why weren't they officially if, if it was so difficult to make one of those games right then why weren't they releasing those? Uh, why weren't they releasing some sort of single player game? Because it is so easy to put put those if sorts it's of so games easy out to there. Make a multiplayer game, then why can't Rockstar do it? <laughs> well, obviously, well, they Rockstar did, but again, it goes back no, to what take. No. Yeah, their single player is rock solid, but their multiplayer is not. If it is really, GTA Five has made an insane killing, amount of man. money, so they definitely yeah. know how to make an online game. You know, yeah. Not so, that, that, but the, but the thing is that when it started, but uh, obviously when when GTA Online started, it wasn't very great. Exactly, burn, man. Burn. But at the, no, time, at the same time, at the same time, at the same time. What what kind of environment do they have for their for their online development? If you notice a lot of the a lot of online development with a with a lot of the more the bigger games, right? You know, like Call of Duties and stuff like that. Usually that sort of stuff is all set off to another team. This is done within Rockstar. So a guy a, a company that's usually more tilted toward a single player aspect also has to split uh, split hairs and also develop an online mode. Yeah, and they and they 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 put most of their resources to the single player. That's why they pushed off on this. Yeah, well, why why Red Dead Redemption, uh, the new Red De the new Red Dead game took so damn long? Is not really, I don't think, is because of the online mode. It really was because of the single player. 
this yeah. is the Maybe. single most expensive game ever made. Like, how can you guys actually sit there and honestly think it costs more to make a single player game? Because you have to put more money into them, dude. Think Manny so just made a great point. Like, well, this alone can kill yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Look, Ma Manny just made a great point. When we, when this generation first started, we had a ton of multiplayer games. You finally started getting the good ultra triple A single player games three years after it started because it takes longer to make these games. Anybody could just shit out these multiplayer games. You know, Th that's not that hard yeah it's hard to maintain them over a long time but Apex legends come from what happened? Shit came out of nowhere yeah exactly they shitted it out you know they need time for a titanfall though you know what i'm saying like you know look at it, yeah look right. at the, i mean look at our look at everybody's favorite overwatch right out there initially there was no sort of uh, s sort of character development they just thought of a bunch of cool characters and thought tossed them into an arena okay. that's all it was that's not fair you guys can't you can't scrape the yeah, bottom of the barrel of multiplayer games and throw them towards the apex you know the, the very tip top of the mountain overwatch is considered player. one of the that's better not, games out overwatch there. Not, is yeah. one of considered one of the better sort of games no, because they always, what did they what did they concentrate what were they what were they concentrating apex they, this is a free game too. And that's what, 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 they, look at and look at how long it took them to develop that thing. That's yeah. because that that is a low resource game. That's not necessarily the kind of shit that I'm talking about. Okay, what are you talking oh. about then? Because you know we're talking about multiplayer games in general. Yeah, yeah. Because you can you can cherry pick those games and you can cherry pick fucking Fallout, The Division, Watch Dogs, Destiny. Oh, wait, 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 Brett. What what took longer to develop, Fallout seventy six or Fallout four? They were developed together, so neither. What? No, they weren't. Fallout 76 actually took longer. If you want the actual answer, Fallout 76 well, took Fallout longer. Fallout 76 is a byproduct of Fallout 4. That shit was only, the, like, they got Fallout 4 and just uh, put a fucking a multiplayer skin. No, they were, they were in development concurrently, man. No, you're saying... Well, no, oh, that, because that, that can't be because Fallout 76 had bugs that were fixed in, in Fallout 4. So how could they have been developed concurrently? There, I mean, whenever that you're talking about, whenever that build was split off, that they did not put put in any of the patches from Fallout Four. Oh, everything from Fallout Four that was fixed should have been fixed in seventy six. I, I, I didn't say the teams where they were in. Maybe maybe parallel would be a better version. Like that's actually proof of my point. If they completely finished Fallout Four before they started Fallout seventy six, then the fixes that were in Fallout Four would have made their way into Fallout seventy six. Instead, they built on top of those mistakes before they had a chance to fix them. Which shows that it was in development well before Fallout Four was released. Like if you if you mention games like Star Citizen or some some stuff like that, then maybe I'll I'll give you like a benefit of the doubt. But no, I'm just not talking. I'm not talking like like you know your, your Overwatches and your Team Fortresses. Like those are those are famously easy games to develop. That's but not that's, what I'm talking that's, about. That's the litter of games we're getting. Like that's 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 most of the games that that we're getting. Like, between the launch of Anthem and Division, and we're gonna we're gonna qualify online games as Overwatch. Overwatch is an over is an online game. What are you but talking that's what I'm about? It's not, it's not the main standard of games, man. Fortnite, we're literally sitting between the division. Two you don't have to play online if you don't want to. Minecraft there is a campaign. Minecraft player. is a spinoff game. That's 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 an online game. So is so is fucking uh, PUBG. Like yeah, that's that's the bevy of games that we're getting now. Of multiplayer games that we're getting now, and really, it's Carlos? Yes. Yeah, he's right. Okay. <laughs> Again, I'm playing the edition two like right now, so I, so I'm like, okay, this doesn't feel FIFA, like FIFA, Madden, NBA 2K, MLB The Show. Let me keep going. Those are all single player games with the a Legend, multiplayer thrown on it. Dota, Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone. Like, you want me to like? These are all the fucking multiplayer, like most of the multiplayer game, multiplayer games. They're all like bastions of each other. But the but the, but here's the here in lies the key to to the, that sort of multiplayer. Why and why I continue to say that to to make those initial investments in within the multiplayer online world, it is not as expensive to to uh, to make a triple A sort of single player game is because they can concentrate on one important thing, gameplay. And that's where they that's where they excel at. Yeah, they don't need to they worry all, about actors are, or scripts or cinematics. To, they yeah, they don't need to worry, to worry about any of that. Yeah, exactly. They don't need to worry about hiring voice actors. They don't need to get a writer. In fact, in the case of Overwatch, they hired they got all that stuff later, and they just hired a bunch of comic bot guys to do that stuff. So which nobody is incredibly cheap. What happened? 
So nobody directed the division. Doesn't no, have the division. The division. No. The, the it division have any is single player. Actors. Yeah, there's no. no big names. It's not like Call it's, of Duty when they want to get single, all the and it has a and it has a single player component. Mahoney and everyone. Too. Yeah. Anyway, man, let's so, move. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Last thing, and then we got to move on because we still got a bunch of questions. Go ahead. It's funny how multiplayer games with a single player aspect are considered multiplayer in your eyes, but just because Division has a single player, it's considered a single player game. It's both. It's both. Yeah, they put the key the part mind. of the Division that they promoted in the way it is is the story. It's the whole campaign, and then the multiplayer and the Dark Zone, all that stuff is the add on. But it's always been the story. That's why there's a comic. That's why there's a book. That's why there's a movie because of the story. There's a reason why I didn't mention Call of Duty and Battlefield is because uh, most of the iterations because they yeah. had both single ammo. Lo looter shooters are both, man. They're equal parts because you can't you can play the division by yourself, but you need to be connected online to play that shit. You know, looter so shooters are dead stop multiplayer games. That's my opinion. All right. Anyway, let's move on here. Um, okay, what game console had your favorite UI and or features? Uh, oh, so Dead Space. Um, console, 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 console. 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 Xbox 360. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 360 had that was awesome. Interface. Everything yeah. so easy. Um, for me, I've never really cared for the interfaces of any of the things because I feel like they all have their issues. Uh, I think there a lot of them are not not uh, you know they're not that intuitive to be honest. I, I really don't. <laughs> I really don't think any of them was 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 my favorite one. Actually, yeah, no, I was gonna say none of them. Even going back to the past games. For me, it was the 360. Just just for the simple fact that whenever you press the guide button, it showed your chat, it showed messages, yeah. it showed it showed everything. It showed everything. Yeah. And then yeah. they've they, they've been incorporated. Like fucking 360. I mean, Xbox One failed to do that at launch. Yeah. They regretted and put that it's, shit it's, back on. Yo, oh, remember? That's remember right. I, yeah. The question. How do you even mess up chat? You were that was so easy. And next, you know, with Xbox One, you couldn't even create a chat room. People couldn't even figure that shit out for the longest. Yeah. Well, they cool. messed up chat because they integrated Skype. They should have kept what they had. Yeah, yeah they, they, they fucked up so much. And they split everything up into its own app, even the Chivos. Chivos was his own app. Before, it was just, you know, press the guide button. I press to the left. All right, I see all the Chivos. Now I got to open up another app. Takes me out of the game. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Manny. I don't think any of them has, you know, that I've played hasn't had any, like, spectacular UI. They've been functional at best, you know? I feel I, like, you know, go ahead. Go ahead, Brett. I have to agree that the 360 is best. I don't know. I'd, on a personal note, Tony, I don't know if you can answer the question of what is the best with none of them. But Manny did it, so I'm going with him. Well, if Manny jumped off a bridge, would you too? Probably. I got to save him, don't I? <laughs> you don't like water. We've talked about it. <laughs> I don't have a, as long as it's like, you know, regular water, that's fine. It's just the ocean. There's monsters down well, there. Well, jumping off the bridge. Let's say if he's jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, that, that's, that, a that's, a, that's a whole other type of questions right there, bro. Someone in the chat says 360 dashboard went through uh, too many iterations. It did, but yeah. at, at the end, it, it's it still worked. All right, yeah. you know what, fucking, since I have to give an answer, I like the Vita's UI. There you go. Ugh. Oh, the, 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 the little the bubbles? bubbles? Yeah, I like the bubbles. Oh, I like the bubbles. There you go. I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't very impressed yeah. by the. Listen, my point. My point is, I don't think any any of these g things have had good UIs. But so I just throw Vita in there just for the Do hell of it. Do you remember when that, when that rumor was spreading that it was going to get an update and that they were going to switch it to the PS4 layout? Oh, it was going to yeah. have that. Oh, I was hoping that was real. I was like, yes, finally get rid of the damn bubbles, and it never happened. Yeah, but hell, that's the fucking PS4 yeah. still doesn't see the Vita. And that's an unknown device. I yeah. gotta change my answer. Uh oh, PlayStation Three. Really? The XMB? Really? The XMB? XMB? Really? Oh, yeah. not, no, not that. And you guys are going to hate me for saying this. PlayStation Home Beta. Ooh, even more. It can work. What? You <laughs> like work. stinky socks. God damn. <laughs> Dude, like, it, was, it was actually pretty awesome being able to, like, because I play a lot where I, you know, I talk with buddies, you know, they'll jump into a group chat and be like, hey, man, I don't know. What do you want to play today? Like, I, like me and Morgan, oh, we played like, three or four different games. I was you just... Yeah, Are you saying you played PlayStation Home? Yeah. How? What? What? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm 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 flabbergasted because I was on fucking PlayStation Home. But you guys didn't know each other back then. Didn't know each Fuck. Really? No, I, <laughs> I fucking love PlayStation Home. It's it was a wasted concept that never uh, hit its potential, in my opinion. But you, it was still. Did you, did you play She? Uh yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude, right. I love I loved logging in and like running around to all the different hubs, and then like a buddy would join in. I'd be like, "Dude, come over and check out the the fucking stone statue I got from Uncharted." They come over and we play arcade games in my little digital apartment, and then launch into a game and play a game together. It was actually pretty sweet. What the hell? As someone as someone that was a fan of of the Warzone back in the day, um, that's all that's all hip hop gamer used to talk about is home. Remember, remember John Shaw? Fuck home. Shit's a dollhouse. <laughs> what is it? Was it? I, I, know, I know. I know. Riku didn't Riku. Who was saying that a long time ago? It was like uh, who was who was? Uh, they wanted their trophy room because that was one of the things. That he, was me. That's why I stopped. Yeah. I, I wanted my motherfucking trophy room. They didn't give it to me. You know. And that was the thing they prom- they promised that too, you know. That would have been so cool. Yeah, Rico would have a trophy warehouse. Oh, you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a trophy museum and shit, you know. That's crazy, man. Um, yeah. All right. Any anybody else want to jump in with the UI stuff, Brian? I can't think of any of them. They all yeah. seem to be all right or just trash. Exactly, exactly. You know, I would, you know, I would think the company that, 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 like, Microsoft would be really good at making UIs, but even them, it's like, ugh. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I think 360 is a great interface. I think Xbox One has a terrible interface. Horrible. It's really bad. By the way, I noticed that the guys who said no didn't own it 360, so maybe that's why, you know, because it, it seems like a consensus is uh, 360, but I don't know. I never played to see 360. Um, anyway, moving on here. Oh, here's somebody we know, Sage Surge, a.k.a. Dana Abercrombie. So her f- her first question is for you, Adam. Um, and I feel like this is an insider type of question because, oh, you guys do, <laughs> because you guys do WrestleCast. She goes, it's been 20 years since the release of WCW slash NWO Revenge. Has the game held up? Does it belong in the Hall of Fame of wrestling video games? It already is. Yeah, it's uh, Aki. Man, if that was now that studio I didn't bring it up before when we were talking about studios that went out because they're still around. They just don't make wrestling games anymore. That mm-hmm. engine was awesome. Def Jam Vendetta and all that. That was the last time we saw them. But yep. it was awesome. Yeah, definitely. That one's up there. No Mercy, the mm-hmm. NWO game. That's that was also up there. W, w was it WCW w- versus w- NWO. Out. Yeah. That those are some great games, man. It's fun to this day. Those are fun games. It's a shame. See, that's those are great games that were on the N sixty four, and it's a shame that we won't see those ported on the Switch. Yeah, because that that all involves a, a lot of licensing stuff. The the lights. I don't think WWE get too bitchy about it, but man, I think it's a sixty four. We don't really see sixty four games on any of these devices for Nintendo. It's as if it's just something they can't do. Yo, man, we can't do that. They're probably ashamed <laughs> of like the the graphics back in the day. God, no. Yeah. All right. Because I mean, yeah. even on 3DS or Wii, the Wii, I didn't have a Wii, but you guys had a Wii. Were there any N64 games on there? Don't like, love me in there, there motherfucker. Mario, there, there Mario was Galaxy. a virtual console. The Wii. The um, uh, you could play like Ocarina of Time. Uh, Star Fox 64 was on it. And I think Mario yeah. Galaxy, right? No, not Mario Galaxy. Oh, um, Mario, Super Mario 64. 64. Yep. Mario 64. Yep. Yeah. It had a good emulator in the Wii. Okay. So I don't know why they can't do it now. That's a good point. Yeah, did anybody else play this game? No Mercy? Yeah, I did. No Mercy, yeah. No, not No Mercy, yeah, uh, the the revenge game she talks about. Yeah, yeah. Revenge no. games. No, yeah, no. those games good. Yeah, they're all in the same ca- It's the same okay. uh, development group. It's, all, it's yeah, the same controls. Cool. Yeah. I got you. All right, Um, this next question is for all of us. Uh, if you could invite a video game developer on Throwdown, who would it be? Cliffy B. Come on now. Mm. <laughs> you know, he's not he's a, a he's developer the most vocal. anymore. He would definitely come out and say all kinds of shit. He, don't he quit the industry. Don't you know what? You know what? Know what, what he still made shit. Right, right, right. Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Peter Molyneux. Uh, oh, I beat Manny to it. <laughs> no, I actually wouldn't say. Peter I'm gonna go. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go down the line. Manny, you go first. Who do you want to have I, on through them? I would say David Jaffe. That dude oh, is a fucking nut. I would totally want him on here. <laughs> he would. He would just say some crazy ass shit. Have you ever listened to his his um? He's doing his nutty, live pod, his yeah, his nutty, nutty yeah. podcast. Oh my yeah, god. Nuts. Yeah. He, yeah. He's lost it. He's going through some hard shit. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like he's having like I, think, I feel like he's having like a midlife crisis or something mm-hmm. like that. And dude's dressing up like a, an evil clown, doing all kinds of other crazy shit. I mean, I swear, like it's in, it's like it's like seeing a car crash or like just like this guy is just like in a downward spiral, man. I, I hate I hate to say that, but it's it's so entertaining to watch because he's just. Burning his fucking reputation in his career, just right in front of you. All right, I would love to have that guy in there. Yeah, Chris, what about you, man? 
I think I would invite um, John Carmack on here. You know, before <laughs> before yeah. he decided to start building rockets and shit. I mean, the guy made Doom and Quake and all that stuff, all this iconic shit. I would love to hear what he has to say about the industry now. He's not part of it. Yeah, Carlos. Uh, Ken Levine, so he can talk about Bioshock. <laughs> I think we can spend like ten hours on it. Like he's an interesting guy, man. He has some good ideas, man. Like we saw Manny. Remember that thing we went to the Tribeca thing? Um, mm -hmm. That was really good. He had a good uh, speech about you know the challenges that actually come with trying to make a single player game endlessly replayable. Again, he's still trying to crack that nut, and he hasn't done it yet. It's interesting. Um, Brian, what about you? Um, I don't know. I was about to say Pete Molyneux, but maybe um. Who's the No Man's Sky guy? Oh, yeah. Sean yeah. Murray? Yeah. Sean Murray. Sean Murray, yeah. yeah. That'd be interesting. If, um, we, if, we can get, if we, I mean, he's like in a, like, he's like in media silence, though, but if we could somehow get him to talk. <laughs> yeah. And Brett, you said Peter Molyneux, but uh, what would you ask him? I would, I would uh, sit down and I would say, so, Peter, tell us about your visions to grow the throwdown and then just listen <laughs> for two hours. Yes. That would be amazing. And um, Adam, Cliffy B, right? Cliffy B. You just want to ask him about the, the jockey run or whatever the fuck his shit is called? Roadie run? run. Yeah. Yeah. But just everything. The guy's very vocal. And Adam, you sound like just, a robot right now, bro. Uh, just drop out and uh, come back. Um, yeah, by the way, for me, it's weird because I probably get some of these guys on the show, but it, like the main throwdown show isn't, I've realized it's not very conducive to interviews because there's seven of us in here. So I think if we ever like were to do like, a, I've been thinking about this for the last couple of months, by the way, there's some insider shit right now. I think we'll probably do like an offshoot interview show because I think this main thing right here, it wouldn't really work too well. It's just it'd be a bunch of craziness going on. Dude, it would be an inquisition if we interviewed somebody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's it what I'm saying. I mean, I would th I would think it would fit under the Throwdown Special um, moniker. Yeah, yeah. Have. So you know, much, so yeah, we well, haven't. So I think that's what we would do. Like one or two of us, we interview like whoever, and like actually it would be like you know, you know, like whoever wanted that person on. You know, they like. I just want to keep it short because it's just too. Like Brett said, it'll be Inquisition. It'd be too fucking crazy. But I've been thinking about this. Like, how do we bring back Throwdown interviews, but not in the main show itself? Like spotlighted itself. You know, because well, I could, I could get, yo, if I, tr if I really, all these guys you're mentioning, if I really tried, I could get most of these guys on because I know yo, people. Man, can you get Takashi you know? in this? I'll be in it. Well, yeah. I mean, Japanese is, guys may be a little weird, but uh, the, the, this yeah. is the way, I mean, you know, this is again, yeah. insider baseball. I think this is the way you do it. We don't, we're not, I don't think we should do it live. I no, think I think so. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Be a pre-recorded thing. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm being real right now. I could get Jaffe on this show. He's been on other shows. We could get Jaffe on this show. That wouldn't even be an issue, you know? Um, but, yeah, it's something I've, I've been thinking about. Um, so, uh, for my answer, mm, I don't know. I, I'll, actually, I do have one, but no, we, we could, that, can, that can never happen. Kojima. Oh, no. Would, that no would, fucking way that would, would happen. never get Kojima on this show. And, and the logistics would be weird because we need a translator and all that, you know? We would probably have to use one of his people. to. I, I know who I would want. I know who I, who I would want. Even though some you know some of us made fun of him, I want to get Jeff Keighley on. I think he'd have a lot of interesting things to say. Yo, man, he you ain't know? no developer. Yeah, I, He's not a developer, but, I mean, yeah, I would think he would be an interesting thing. I to think so, have. yeah. But, I, I mean, that's a, that's a, the he, only he thing. About stuff. I want to ask only, him about. I want to ask him about the Doritos, man. I, I think I think the only the, I think the only thing about it is with the Jeff Keeley, it's trying to get past the the facade. Yes, I, that's yeah, what I, I mean, that's why I want to get him on. I want to get the real Jeff Keeley. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, he's I a pro, like, man. He's been doing it for years. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like it. I feel like it would be hard for him to get past that. I feel like Victor Lucas would be a better a be, better. That would be yeah. Person. He's more of a personality. Actually, I think I still think Jeff Keeley would be easier to crack than Reggie Fisa me. You know, so you gotta oh, do a Joe Reggie, Rogan style. Get them Reggie's high, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, those get them yeah. high. Yeah, that's right. You know, Reggie's a pimp. He won't even. He, you know, he won't crack. <laughs> yeah. Tom, yeah, Tommy Tyler Rico. I, I, I feel confident I could get him on the hit. Victor Lucas is cool. I, there's a bunch of these guys. Like I said, you guys name these up. Like I'm pretty sure I could get both of these cats on. It's just what's what would be the format. But you're right. Like something shorter, not live. You know, I think we could do that. It'll grow the channel. But. You know, mm -hmm. again, t we're always thinking about things for a throwdown. We're not just, you know, sitting on our laurels here, as you well, can yeah, tell. Yeah. You know, 
you know, yeah, you know, at least where the show goes, like, the way that the channel goes and stuff like that. It's always nice to kind of have some additional things to kind of for people to into to tune into, you know. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Uh, moving on here, Digital Tiger. So he goes. They say comparison is the thief of joy. I've never heard this expression, by the way. Maybe I'm stupid. I never heard that. Anyway, do you believe? anthem is really is really that bad of a game or was it just trashed by people expecting something like mass effect for example i absolutely loved division one oh excuse me D destiny one from launch until the end i loved it for what it was and i didn't compare it to the halo series because it was made by bungie um so brett this is for you but um you know just give a shorter version of what you told us on thursday um man i'm trying to remember what that was um why do you like the division yeah, okay, uh, anthem answer, yeah yeah, answer. <laughs> quick question. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, quick answer. Yeah. Um, critically, it's not getting shitted on because it has a 60 on Metacritic. That's kind of like a mixed review. Um, so I think most of mostly it's getting shitted on by by pe just like regular consumers, and that's because they all the hype surrounding the game and the fact that Bioware is not releasing a Mass Effect game, and they're just piling on on that. But yeah. It does. It doesn't mean that the game does not deserve its own criticism as well. Yeah, Brett, I'll, I'll ask the question again. Is it that bad of a game? No, no. It's. Uh, I've actually had a couple people who you know uh, have been picking up and playing with me recently. It's weird because every time we jump in chat, uh, people I play with are like, "Dude, I fucking love this game." Like they kind of they kind of sound a little surprised by it. Um, no, it's the biggest problem with this is yes that people are jumping on a bandwagon that they are review bombing it because it's not what they expected uh i forget wait, how did he say it, the question the the what is the what of oh um comparison is the thief of joy exactly i i think that people having an idea of what this game was going to be or what this game should be based on what they know of bioware or what they know of this other game um I think led people to have different expectations and it's not that the game doesn't stand up and it, it doesn't deliver in a lot of these aspects. It's just different. And I think a lot of times like people are even honestly a little bit harsh on the game. They think that, you know, Oh, because you know, Bioware doesn't have any of its uh, natural story things in here. Like, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of it. I'm not going to say that there, this is a Bioware game, but there are choice, you know, dialogue choices, which affect branching trees and people's opinion of you. And, they affect kind of the, the home world and then it changes a little bit. It's it's the minutest amount of Bioware-esque stuff. But to say that there's none in there is is wrong. So I know for a fact some people are just hating on the game because it's not the thing that they thought that it was going to be, or it's not this other game, or it's not Division, or it's not Destiny. It's most of the mostly it's people hate this game because it's not Mass Effect. And I think that they're doing themselves a disservice, but that's their prerogative. I also think that the the, the stink of the, the previous Mass Effect, where like you know you hear you hear all those things as people saying, "Oh yeah, they took away people," you know, they took away people from the the Mass Effect game to make this game, and then now they're looking at it. It's like, hey, it's not that great, not as great great as you know it does you know the way the other one could have been. You know what I mean? Like they're they're already holding a grudge on uh, on an Anthem because of the fact they know what they know from the previous thing. So you know many, I, mean? I, I got to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. All of this backlash that people have on it, who created it? Was it the developers or the publishers? Okay. That's a that's an interesting one because the fans. Oh uh, well, it's 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 again, it's a little bit of both because you know we have the situation again where we're we have the de you have the developers that made the, the 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 excuse me the they had the publishers that made the decision like hey we want you to make this and this this sort of you know um destiny type of game so they obviously took away a lot of their their better people from that that title because it's an uh, it's it's already an install based thing you know it's like almost like hey whatever we put out it'll do amazing because we know it's it's mass effect and people love it so meanwhile we have the other guys doing doing this new thing so it's a weird sort of situation yeah you know Obviously, people were very, uh, very mad about about, about the, the state that Mass Effect Andromeda came out at. And I think we also can't forget the, let's just say, the stink of EA right now. People were not happy with Battlefront 2. They were not happy with Battlefield 5. And, you know, they came into this game. It's like, uh, I don't know about this company right now, you know. So th 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 all that shit, you know, factors in there, you know. It was, it was more than that. I mean, it, 
I'm not going to come out and say it's the perfect game, but I will say I'm, I'm enjoying it. But I do feel like it's the best analog I can give is, give is if you're sitting at home and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door and you step out into your front porch and there's an entire mob of people holding butane sort uh, unlit torches and sharpening pitchforks. And they're like, we have some thoughts we'd like to critically share with you. This is going to be a comfortable and easy discussion. Like, no, motherfucker. Yeah. I see you sitting there sharpening your pitchforks. You were ready for this shit to happen but, before I even showed up. But Brett, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna defend the pitchfork people, but it was the it, it's it, it's at the fault of this of the of the publisher the whole reason why this is happening in the first place. It's like there's I games agree. there's games like Anthem that come out like fucking Destiny like it didn't get panned when it came out like and that's like the Halo developers that made it, but the specific Destiny circumstances that when it came out, no, it didn't. What Destiny was like one of the most like beloved games of this generation when it first Destiny dropped. Destiny two, people. Oh, Destiny, yeah, no, De- yeah, Destiny one we're talking about, but Destiny two, yeah. No, but Destiny yeah. two got an. What yeah. is it? Uh, eighty four. I'm trying to see the Metacritic scores on these. Yeah, but Brad, I, I see what you're saying too. You know, um, here's my, something that I just 85. thought about. Yeah, I just something I thought about right now. Let's just say hypothetically, You know, I don't like hypotheticals, but I gotta throw it in there. Hypothetically speaking, Anthem came out. And it was not it, the exact same game as it is now, but not by Bioware, not by EA. I think it would have gotten less heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I agree. I think people would go, oh, shit, this is kind of cool. Like, it, it, I, it's, I agree. Yeah. yeah I, I think, think yeah. I feel like everybody everybody already being so critical about about what's happened with the previous Mass Effect game and the stuff that's happening with with the, you know, with, with EA and all that stuff. I think everybody's just in, in being a lot more critical about this. Than they probably would if it was just some you know other company doing it. Same thing with same thing with Crackdown, Crackdown Three. No, I it's, think Bioware's I think Bioware is special. And I got I got to say this real quick. I think the problem is most of the time when you look at these games, you're like, look, just because they're releasing X game does not mean they're they're, they're not going to release Y game anymore, or X game is not going to affect the release of Y game. Unfortunately, in Bioware's case, we actually have physical evidence that the development of this game directly affected their core franchise. So all of a sudden that that kind of barrier that usually stops people from being like, well, they can do things on the side as long as it doesn't affect what I do. They've shown that this Anthem affected them. And so people have correlated Anthem to a lack of quality in, um, in Mass Effect games. And so they hate the fact that Anthem exists because they feel like it's stolen something precious from them. Yep, I, I agree with that. Well, and yeah, not, think, not was, only, yeah, not sure. only that, but they also released uh, an acceptable game instead of something to the caliber of Mass Effect. Yeah, that's the Even other problem. It, yeah, that like people were like, okay, uh, you guys didn't like you guys put all your eggs into this basket. Let's see if this is at least as good as Mass Effect. And when they found out it wasn't as good to their eyes, they, that made a mess. Well, they're already pissed that they didn't get the Mass Effect game that they wanted in with the Andromeda. And then they're pissed that the game that they did put all their you know their money in was not as good either so it's like a double-edged sword you know they got fucked both by both sides there you know so yeah but but if it, it just came out from whatever random publisher it, it people would be hey, this is kind of cool they got mechs and shit you know um it's let interesting me, let me, yeah let me put it this way like and this is a really dark way to put it like let's say that somebody was gonna have twins and one of the twins ate the other twin in utero and you had full knowledge of this the baby came out, you might kind of have it, even if you didn't want to, might kind of have the mindset of, you better fucking do something of yourself. Like, yeah. you ate the other one, you better be a fucking piano prodigy or something. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the problem, is that they, and it's a very weird thing, too, because I think this is the first time, like, people hate a game's existence because it exists. Most of the time, you'd be like, ah, eh, not my thing, I'll just move along. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, man. it's time. It's time wasted. That's what people feel is. It's like, hey, this is what we want. You want to make money. We want to buy your product. This is what we want. And then something comes down. It's like, no, this is not what we want. You are wasting all this time. You weren't listening to us. We hate you. Spit, spit, spit in your face. That's what happened. <laughs> Damn. All right. We got to move on because we still got a bunch here. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. If you were accepted for the Mars One program, you know, the one where you could never return, and you had the ability to play video games on even even online, which three to five video game franchises would you take? So he goes, he would he would take Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, Zelda, Metroid, and Little Big Planet. Now, remember, here's the caveat. Not single games actual franchises so even though you only have three to five franchises that's a lot of fucking games potentially you know 
So, so do, do, yeah, go ahead. So with, with, with that question comes a lot of <clears throat> a lot of other questions like, can you? So you take the 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 past games too, right? The past yeah. and future. Yes. Okay. Cool. And yeah. future. And f- well, not future. Yeah, because well, they up couldn't. to the point where you went into the. In, no, 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 no. Think about it. They could still ship you those games. You well, know? If, if, you're, then, if you're able to play online, you can download them. Yeah. Yeah. See, then, then now we're, we're already. You would need some that. fucking quantum physics shit to you know to, to get that online. But let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. You know. So, what but, franchises would you bring with you? Uh, you know what I'm gonna say. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. Yeah, on the same. Yeah, Metal Gear series, all the way up from Metal Gear One, all the way up to the, the final one. Uh, all the way, all the way to survive. You know what? I'll t- <laughs> it, it, I, you know, I probably uh, can't play Survive because it's an online game, right? When, when no, Mandy you can. You can. That, when Manny gets to that one, he opens the airlock. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. This, this also, this includes, this also includes Metal Gear Rising: Revengeance, the the Game Boy games, even the friggin' um, um yeah, it includes all those things. So, oh, yeah. Ghost Babble. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, you're not thinking Ghost in the Babel. future. Because you're going to be stuck there. So if we know that that's not coming back, that's well, it. Well, I mean, it's did done. it say future? It, no, it, no. He yeah. says if you're going on that Mars trip, that's a seven-year trip, and that's no, not coming back. So It's a one-way trip. It's a one-way yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah. It. But the thing is, like, if you're going to pick games that you know you could play for the rest of your life and enjoy, understand? Yeah, I, I would pick I would pick those. I'd pick the Metal, the Metal Gear franchise, and I'd pick the whole Final Fantasy franchise. Ooh, there you go. Manny, you got one more franchise. You could throw it in there if you want. Oh, uh, whew, shoo, shoo, da, blah, blah, blah. it's got to be a long haul one. You know what? I'll take the I'll take Dragon Quest as well. Nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Hey, um, Chris, what about you? Uh, I'd probably bring the entire Final Fantasy franchise. Uh, um, all of Zelda, and uh, you know what? I bring all of Dragon's Quest. Everything nice. from Dragon Warrior up to the current one, yeah. All right, um, yeah, I'm gonna just jump in now because you guys kind of took some of my answers. Yeah, Metal Gear, obviously, um, Final Fantasy, and man, I would have said Mass Effect, but you saw what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Dragon Quest as well because there's a bunch of those games I still haven't touched yet. You know, um, all right, Carlos, what about you? So we're only doing three. Uh, you could do three to five if you want. I just oh, okay. three. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll take the. Final Fantasy franchise. I'll take the Pokemon franchise. I'll take the Mario franchise. I'll take uh, Call of Duty, and I'll take Halo. Nice. All right, Brian. Oh, Persona. <laughs> nah, nah. You already got your five, motherfucker. God damn it! Can I go back? <laughs> nah, it's un- that's it. You're stuck. It's a one way <laughs> trip. It's a one way trip. Back. Nah, send man. Nah, nope. It's a one way trip. You're stuck. <laughs> All right. Quick, send me back. I forgot Persona. <laughs> nope. Thrusters are engaged. Nope. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the rocket hurls away. You just hear him go Persona. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Brian, go, man. <laughs> Um, so it has to be, is it three or five three, franchises? T- three, two, five. Oh, three, two, oh. five. You can even pick four if you want. It's up to you. Mm. Okay, Final <laughs> Fantasy, because that has extreme longevity. Um, Call of Duty, because you'd have some action in there. Um, I want to say Gran Turismo, but I feel like the earlier games might be a bit eh. Need for Speed, there you go. That has enough variation to keep me going forever. And of course... I can't believe no one has said this yet. Grand Theft Auto. Oh, shit. Oh, Damn. You have like 10 hundred hours in like one game. Uh, yeah, it's a one-way oh, trip. Yeah. One yeah. 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 No, that's it. One-way yeah. trip. One-way trip. Yeah. Can I add that? <laughs> no. no, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. It's a one-way <laughs> trip. Because Chris, we've already been shipped out. Can yeah. I radio Houston? Yeah. Like, can I upload that shit, Yeah, Chris. Send, send me the code, yo. <laughs> <laughs> this also means that you have to play the original Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, man, all of it, yeah. you know? No, no I mean right. like the top angle. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Just like with Final Fantasy, that. you're also going to play X2 and all that other shit. You know? Yo, man, go play, play, well. play me some yep. Mystic Quest, son. Yep, there you go. Yeah, like I would want to change my answer from Dragon Quest to GJ, but it's a one way trip. Sorry. You know, all right, um, Brett. I mean, you're already flying. Yeah, that's see. it. I'm already on the planet, baby. All right, uh, go ahead, Brett. Elder Scrolls, Fallout. Uh, just because so much gameplay in that. Um, let's see. 
all of Final Fantasy. Um, I would actually probably, I think, pick the Pokemon games because not not because I'm that big of a Pokemon uh, fan, although I, I do enjoy the games, but because, A, I haven't played a shitload of them, and I know you can put hundreds upon hundreds of hours into every single one. And, fuck, you got to battle. You got to do something in the space capsule. Pokemon battles. Um, and I... There's three. I'm going to throw in a bonus one of, uh, I think, Smash Brothers. I think Smash Brothers. Just because I've, I've, I've been in cramped quarters with many people, and Smash Brothers helps things. Is that your final list? Uh, I get a fourth one, so I can have you. You have, I get a fifth oh, yeah, one. yeah, go ahead, man. No, you got to do it now, because those rockets, man, the rocket's about to take off. Oh, the rockets are boosted. Uh, did I say the Zelda series? Yeah, uh, no, you did not. No, you didn't. By the way, uh, Chris, right, Tony, uh, mentioned I, I got to do it now, though. Uh, Kristen says no Dark Souls. I'm aborting the mission. Call Elon, man. Launch, get the, and launch the rest of my library to me. Get a phone. He comes out like, thank you for boarding the Mars shuttle. There will be no Dark Souls. Everyone's like, oh my god. <laughs> They were like, well, actually, you know what you would have to say that would even help it more. Maybe if you just say it, Souls, the Souls games, because that also includes uh, Demon, Demon Souls. Souls as well. As yeah, that's right. Dark Souls and Bloodborne's got to be thrown in there too. That what would about be about Sekiro, but, man. But hey, that that kind of counts too, doesn't it? But the yes. rockets already left. All right, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, what about you, man? Gears of War, Damn. Uh, Damn. FIFA. Because uh, if I'm out there, I want to keep up to date, and that comes out every year, so I can see what teams are winning, what the no, trades remember, are going to happen. You're going to get seven games every seven years. So that's it. Hey, it's all right. But if I'm playing online, I can see updates because that yeah. means I'm getting update rosters and stuff. And so there goes that. Uh, the WWE series, because I eventually feel they will uh, become great. Somehow they'll go back to their old ways. And so I, I have faith. Are you and saying they're going to become great again? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I can't really say it again. I was going to say it, but I can't say it because it's a different studio. So they were never great uh, when it comes to that. I'm hoping another studio jumps in to help out with uh, the, the WWE games. So that's what I'm hoping for. And I've, eventually, I think it'll happen. Uh, Call of Duty, because I love my shoes. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. You know, and uh, what, what I, I have what, my Gears, my FIFA, WWE. Uh, the Division. The vision is the next one. That's the fifth one. And that's right. it. There you go. All right, man. And that's um, it. Now I'm in the rocket ship. That's it. Bye bye, Earth. All right, next question. G Mega Force one, two, three. Which games have been smartened up as opposed to dumbed down? It's pretty often that someone claims a franchise has been dumbed down, but which games have been the opposite, i.e., franchises which have subsequently become deeper slash more complex, more niche, etc.? Good question. Oof. Yeah, that's how good it is. I don't know there the fucking answer. Any? Yeah, I don't there think there are. Any. Yeah, there aren't any. They usually get dumbed down and simplified. In terms of storytelling, maybe. Yeah, I think we're ta- we're more talking about mechanics here. Mechanics, okay. Yeah. I like, mean, there are yeah. uh, I mean, the Soul series. You go back when I went yeah. back and I played Dark Souls one. Like I was like, ooh, this this is a little not as good. Oh, and also, first person shooters. Remember, Tony, we were talking about how. Halo back in the day was yeah. complicated, but now it's—I mean—and now it's like super easy. Yeah. So I, but the thing is, at the same time, single like multiplayer for shooting games has gotten more dumbed down. You know, like you talked about before, like it, it's not about skill; it's about how how much you play. You know. So that's gotten dumbed down. But I see what you're saying, uh, though. Um, but yeah, this is a tough one because most franchises get dumbed down because they want mass appeal. You know. Yeah, can, it's kind of an intentional thing. Can, so. uh, can we give that answer as an answer? None of them. They don't exist. Can we actually do that as an answer? Yes. Sure. I'll allow it. All right. Sure. All right, man. Uh, next question. Um, has a video game influenced your likes and dislikes in the real world? I bought myself a 2003 MR2 Spider when I was in college. I absolutely fell in love with the car because of Gran Turismo 2. Has anyone else had a game influence their real world taste uh, through clothing, food, cars, or whatever? <laughs> I do. I do own uh, a Metal Gear uh, clothing. <laughs> um, like a few years ago, Mustard Brand, which if you probably heard, they do like 
uh, what we, they call designer like like video game themed clothing. And uh, back in those days, they they didn't have like a full on site where they had multiple franchises. They just did Metal Gear Solid Priest Walker. So I have a Metal Gear hat and a metal and um, essentially a replica of the of the of the BDUs or you know the military uniforms and the thing. So yeah, I, I guess it did affect my uh, <laughs> my buying of uh, clothing. Yeah, but I mean, like, like, th- and you started buying those Metal Gear uh, foods in there, didn't you? No, the foods, the the foods are just like, I mean, it was, I mean, I guess it, it worked because, I, you know, the calorie mate was not really a Metal Gear food. Yeah, it was just a true. real, it was a real product that existed that just, you know, was in the game, you know? Yeah. Um, Chris. Yeah, I can't think of any. Yeah, like I could think of, I could think of stuff that's happened to me in other mediums. Like for example, Game of Thrones got me into wine. I never drank wine before. I have an easy you know? one for me though. Um, go ahead, Adam. Cargo pants, GI Joe, and to this day the I game? wear a lot of cargo pants. Just GI Joe in general. Well, we're the, talking about the comic We're talking about video game, video game, video games, Adam. Oh, uh, come on now. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Video uh, yeah. Joe, GI Joe is a video game. So no, if you want to link it, yeah, well, video game is cheesy. I'll link it. I can link it. You can't take it away from me. Yeah, I can. It was a video game at one point. I got one. Go ahead. It was a video it's game. It's kind of simple though. It's like after playing, uh, or like during playing uh, Final Fantasy 15, I just wanted those cup of noodles, man. Oh shit! Ah, you want the, you want the some cup of noodles? <laughs> it looked delicious. It oh, just yeah. it just looks they paid so much attention. I, I, uh, I blame yeah. Resident Evil 2 for my love of the green herb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this in general. There is always somebody at some studio that just makes amazing looking slash video game food slash animated food look at any of the things that you see on tv or anything like that like as far as animation or as in um or in video games and you always notice the food looks amazing yeah because somebody out there (laughs) man you know yeah look at the studio yeah studio ghibli whenever they show food or any like animated show like uh, you ever see out there, like, just amazing looking food because they're just like somebody out there is just fucking hungry, man, and they're gonna make the best looking fucking like steak ever, yeah. <laughs> you know, drawn steak ever. Glorious War says calorie mate because of Metal Gear. Yeah, calorie mate. Yeah, but you know, officially, yeah. you know, if you think about it, Glorious War, that is not officially an, a Metal Gear product. It is actually an advertisement. So officially, their advertising for the product worked on you. Right. Yo, mighty nerd man, fuck that other stream, man. You hang out with us, son. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna leave to another stream now. Yo, man, will you will you like us no more? <laughs> he did say to have a good stream though, so I appreciate that. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, I had appreciation, different cultures, and tried different cuisine because of games. Glorious War said. See, there you go. That's uh, I mean, one thing about one thing about especially <laughs> to be honest, like the most exposure that we have to japanese culture is like through the video games and <clears throat> friggin anime yeah no, that's true like like i always said yakuza and persona those are like virtual trips to japan you know like a tourist guide basically mm-hmm. um I, I mean, here's the thing i'm i'm pretty sure i do have an answer for this it's just i'm drawing a blank right now you know i mean uh, would a toy can count no right no no we're talking about video games specifically you know cuz i can, no no I can, i'm saying would a toy count like a toy that you bought because of some game oh, you i'm know? sure or I collectible guess. like like for example if you bought one of those kingdom hearts 3 toys that looked like the toys you know toy story <laughs> ones like yeah i guess that mm-hmm. would count but eh, i don't know yeah I, I like the question i just wish we had a better answer for you all yeah. right um, <laughs> What's up, Brad? You got one? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm having some of the herb right now. No, actually, I, I'm, I'm quitting smoking, and I switched to a vape, and this thing fucking is... But wait, you've been... Just you use the gum, man. Yeah, just use the gum. Mr. Vape, though. Yeah, you used just to be doing gum. the vape. Yeah, when Rachel died, I just kind of started smoking because I didn't give a fuck. Oh, okay. Damn. I, I was bad. I'm trying to, get, trying to get back to square one here. There you go, my All man. Right. Yeah, Don't get... smoke, kids. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, this is going to be a little weird. I'm going to ask... Three questions by three separate people, but they're all the same question. It's interesting. Whoa, how great minds think alike, as they say. What happened? <laughs> is this the zeitgeist thing? That no, is the zeitgeist. <laughs> it's got to be. I'm going to read them all because, you know, the, they all ask them differently, but they're all the same thing. It's interesting. Okay. okay. Uh, the first one is from Sketch. Um, if it guaranteed the end of DLC, would you be willing to pay a hike in price to video games and how much? That's uh, Sketch. Big Mike asks. When it's as safe to say a company is greedy when they are charging too much for DLC. And lastly, Fonzie, 
Uh, based on Big Mike's question, do you think companies should break away from loot boxes and DLCs by raising the base price of games? If so, how much are you willing to spend? Interesting. We talked about this before, but I think let's let's get into I it now. If this was sparked by our discussion about uh, how do we move from games here. Could be, you know, could be. Um, so, Brett, since you're talking, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> Would I be willing to pay a price increase... And how much? Yes. If if it guaranteed no more DLCs, no more season passes, no more microtransactions, no more loot boxes, would you be willing to pay more for games? And if so, how much? Um. Well, that that there's a, a question there. I, I kind of want to ask, and I know you can't answer. Of if I don't pay for DLC, does that mean I don't get any future content, or all future content is rolled into that? One first price? year, all all first year, because that seems See, to be the trend. So let's at, say all at first that, year. At that, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen because just fucking release the game, finish then. And so but we'll never know. We'll never know. But uh, and that's therein lies the problem. Here's what I, I'll go one further though. I would be willing to pay eighty dollars for a good finished game, and then I would be willing to pay twenty five to thirty dollars for large chunks of DLC, like Monster Hunter, fucking Iceborne shit. I don't want all of these tiny little a la carte bullshit things i will pay a heftier price tag and then 30 dollars like six months later but don't release a fucking like all this bullshit of like oh all three dlcs there shouldn't be three dlcs there should be one expansion to the game like and i because you know we're like oh each one is four to five hours with the content no i want more than that don't don't meter drip this shit to me i play a game and then i finish it if you want me to come back for a second round have some real content there for me like, I don't want to dip into a game that I haven't played in six months for four hours before I've run out of content again. And I think most people just kind of let the, the DLC build up, too. We've gotten to the point where DLC is so ridiculously tiny that it's 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 like ordering a side dish. Like, you have to order a few DLCs just to get any real expansion. So $80 for a base game, $30 for a DLC. Do not try and pull that shit more than once a year. By the way, Brett, you'll like Glorious Wars answer. He goes, I would have paid a hundred dollars for Skyrim back in the day. I think I think Skyrim was worth a hundred dollars back in the day, especially I think that I think that's where uh honestly Bethesda had gotten a lot of their uh a lot of their rabid fan base is they delivered products that went so far beyond what you were paying for them. The community honestly felt like eh, I feel like I owe the developers more money than I gave them. Um, which is a weird concept, but there you go. And trust me, they've got their money worth of Skyrim now. Like, I would have paid that at the beginning, too, but I think they've milked it long enough. Yeah, because, um, you know, we always got to do this on Throwdown, their perspective. Games used to cost $70 back in the mm -hmm. day, you know, $70, $80, depending on the game, you know. So I wouldn't mind paying those kind of prices now, um, but I would take it a little bit of a step further. It's like, no, I don't want to pay for any additional content afterwards. Like, that better be the entire game day one because I ain't coming back to your game a month later. Fuck that shit, you know. So or, or that's that's what I'm saying, yeah, all that extra content. Like, just make them the big beefy games. But, like, so you agree with me, though, like, stop this fucking tiny DLC shit. Yeah, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of DLC. I'm tired of loot boxes. I'm tired of all this shit. Like, just make the game, put it out there, and that's it. Obviously, that's not realistic, but I I'm getting really fed up with it. Because here's the thing. You have games, and I'm talking about games I like. Like Horizon Zero Dawn, right? The DLC comes out seven months after a game. I'm not trying to play that shit seven months later. I'm done. I moved on, you know? So, so uh, yeah, I'm not down with that shit. You got to relearn the fucking controls and everything. You know, um, so yeah, eighty dollars is for me. Like, I think that's a good price for all. Like, but again, it better be a full fucking game. You know, um, that's all. So yeah, again, games used to cost that much, seventy, eighty dollars. So it wouldn't be that much of a stretch for the old school guys. You know, um, Manny, what about you? Uh yeah, I wouldn't pay the extra money for for a game uh, if it guaranteed that that I did that that uh, that I was getting a complete game like I used to back in the day. You know. You you play through you know a game like Dragon Quest like you know the you know one of the Dragon Quest games or you know any other game and you unlock all the characters or you get all the items and all that stuff. I wish, I wish it was still like that. But now everything is just kind of split off into different things. Things that would would be all, like unlockable costumes within a game, you know. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Dragon Quest because Dragon Quest Eleven has that. Like, if you yeah. okay, like basically the game feel it's weird. It's like you play the game and you get to the end credits. That's about seventy hours. Then yeah. there's a whole other 
30 hours it's like oh this is like a dlc that's already in the game and there's that's, a lock that's, yeah exactly that's exactly how that's 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 dragon quest 8 yeah. um well, it was like after you beat the game you get the dragon cry trials and you get to essentially fight the last boss again all jacked up again yeah but this one is like it's a full story i'm like whoa okay mm -hmm. you know it's crazy um adam what about you man uh mm. All right, go to uh, right, make I'll, me last. Make I'll, me last. I'll come back to you, bro. Um, yeah, make me last. Brian. Um, I'm kind of on the fence because again, this is one one of the reasons why I wait until games are out for like a year or so. Because again, usually games these days come out with like a game of the year edition, and that has everything. So I just tend to buy that instead. So I'm kind of pseudo exempt because I already try and do buy the game with everything and I don't buy the DLCs. But if I was forced to say so, then yes, I'd be more than happy to pay more, get a full game day one. And yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, would that change your gaming habits? If you're guaranteed to get the full game on day one, would you buy games day one again? Yeah. Again, I like to buy, well, I like to buy the game and have everything in the game. I don't like the idea of like, hey, there's stuff that's coming out later. Okay, what is it? We don't know yet. We're not going to tell you. So what am I buying into? No one knows. No, I don't like that. I I just buy in the game and have everything so that I can do everything whenever I want to. There you go. All right, Chris. All right, I have. Wait, oh, I go, have go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, get rid of the whole pricing scheme of just a flat rate. Get rid of that because I, as more as I think about it, it's like, oh, if we agree to seventy eight dollars, whatever increase, it won't happen because then look at all the other tiers that they have now. You know, then that means they're actually going to lose money because then they would have to raise those tiers up. And people are like, well, what am I getting now for the hundred dollars? If what I was getting for that hundred dollars before is now eighty dollars, so uh, just get rid of the whole tier system. None of this sixty dollar flat rate because that doesn't help out so, for so games you're that saying, suck. So hold on, because I'm a little confused here. So you're saying um, charge games variably, like every game has yeah, a different price? depending yeah depending okay. on what the, what they offer. So if they well, say, hey, that, this game is going to have season pass, this is going to have this, this, and that for two, three years worth of content guaranteed. Here's a hundred bucks. Okay, then this game it's not going to have all that forty bucks. Okay, Chris, what were you going to say? I actually kind of agree with that because back in the day, I mean, games could be anywhere from fifty to eighty, even ninety dollars. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And mm, yeah. You know, an RPG, like if you had a big RPG, like a Jared's Quest, and they said, this is like 150 hours, and it was 80 bucks, and then it's like, oh, including all these quests or whatever. Yeah, I, I go, okay. Yeah, I don't need to, to worry about anything else. But if it's just like, hey, this is like maybe a, a, 10, uh, a 10 to 15 hour shooter, yeah, it's like, okay, 60 bucks, okay. And it's a complete game. Or maybe even lower than that, $40, 30 you know? That's uh, a, that's yeah, a, yeah you that's know? an interesting way of seeing it, like, you know. Um, anyway, Carlos, what about you, man? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with with most people in the in the panel. It's just give me the the complete game. I don't care if I have to pay a hundred bucks. Um, if it's if it's if it's if it's something like, let's say, okay, we're offering Red Dead Redemption Two with the complete online and the complete single player, then I would pay a hundred bucks because paying sixty bucks for a game that only has half of what it's what it what it's saying it's offering then i feel like i'm not getting my money's worth oh my bad i have to, I have to repeat all that i'm sorry people um when does it get to the point where it gets too greedy like when it just seems like you're paying too much for dlcs and expansions and all this other stuff when do you feel like it gets to that point like what's the price point that you put on that like okay that's too much well, money I, for that shit i got well borderlands borderlands 2 one. when they were like oh here buy the season pass you get all this content wow there was a lot of content but then they released stuff that was outside of the the season pass and I'm like, yeah, you have to pay for this too. What about the season pass? Yeah, this is beyond that now. Oh, that sucks because I was under the impression the season pass gave me everything that you were going to release for this game. You didn't say anything about yearly stuff. You just said, hey, get the season pass, and this is it. This is for the longevity of the game. Nope. They started releasing stuff after, and that wasn't part of it. That's being greedy. All right, Brian. I have one that's quite bad. Um, Dead Alive 6. Is Dead Alive 6? Yeah, that has a season pass that is $90. What the fuck? 
Yeah, that, yep. that's actually that's oh, actually really? really recent. Yeah, Jesus. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, season passes more than the game. Our, our good <laughs> body, our good, <laughs> bo- <laughs> our good body, Young did a did a video about that. Young, yeah. yeah. Young, yeah. Oh wow, Brian, I, I don't think yeah. anybody could top that. <laughs> Fuck. Yep. Yeah, if, and then take it yeah. worse. There are some game journalists out there that are not talking about it. Instead, they're more outraged at the fact that girls have boobs. <laughs> Why am I not surprised, bruh? Oh, God. All right. Uh, okay, anyway, anybody else want to jump in? When do you think it gets too greedy? I think Brian just killed it right there. Like $90? Mm. Like, yeah, that's but It's like... more than the game itself. Like, that is way too far. What yeah. could they be offering in that game that, that, that is, that, that's worth that? Man, I guess any upcoming characters. But no, but who yeah. who else would they fucking put in there? What are they putting Virtua Fighter characters in they, there again? Maybe they will. Who knows, <clears> man? That's my. I'm not gonna get into a tangent. That's one of my problems with modern fighting games. Like you're never gonna get the full fucking game. They're always throwing in new characters. You know, new mm-hmm. stages. New this is fucking stupid. All right. Anyway, moving on here to the last two questions. Um, he changed his name again. <laughs> um, Ellen Page's forehead. I swear, wow! He changes his name just to get me to say this shit. I swear. Um, anyway, his first question is: What were some of your favorite gaming ads on TV or magazines? All the Sega ones. Yeah, my favorite one is the Sega Saturn one, where they had this like naked woman on the on a bed, and she was covered by video game screens, and it's like, like, hey, you see this hot woman? You may not have noticed her because of all these awesome graphics. <laughs> Hilarious. Can't do that now. No, um, no, you cannot. Dude, it was guy. It had to be the Kevin Butler stuff. That was amazing. The Kevin Butler stuff. Yes. Yeah. Like every one of those commercials was fucking gold. Yes, legendary. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny because it kind of took us very Sega approach to it. Things. I think you, that's can't why you I like... can't can't you see Kevin Butler being the Sega guy? Yeah, man. Oh, absolutely. It was yeah. it was when Sony was feeling a little bit sassy and they wanted to uh, throw a little sand around. Like it was it was great. Man, I miss Kevin Butler. He talked more. He single-handedly talked more smack than I'm uh, than anybody since Sega in the '90s. Like <laughs> Sega talked so much shit. Yeah, that was. It great. said how one commercial ruined everything. That one commercial he did. Oh yeah, the yeah, that, yeah. The the, well, um, the Michelin. Oh, the, 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 the one that had the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Bridgestone yeah. car uh, uh, tire Is that ad what ruined it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was actually not doing the Kevin Butler thing at that point in time. Anyway, he had already kind of moved on. No, the, but the there was a, ahead, there was a there was a we offered in the mm-hmm. Bridgestone yeah in the Bridgestone ads. That, yeah. that was the problem. Yeah, because yeah. he ha- apparently he had in his contract that he couldn't be seen with any other video game consoles if he was going to be doing any sort of other you know you know things. Because they were still using his face on a bunch of the a bunch of the marketing. Yeah, and, and it's understandable because he's being portrayed as the president. Remember the president? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like they're the PlayStation. These are the games that we're making. And we're doing all that silly stuff. Do you guys remember those weird ass PS3 ads with the octopuses and shit? Like, what the fuck is this? Oh Don't yeah, PS9 is. Thing. We'll see it again when PS9 yeah. comes. Out. I remember the 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 baby, the naked yeah. baby in the PS3 in the other corner, and mm-hmm. it was like levitating. The, the system. Here's oh, one. Weird. This one's weird. Uh, the Sega Saturn one with that weird genie guy that was like silver and shit. Yeah, he's like, you have come to the next blah blah blah. That guy. Yeah, that was weird, dude. And the, oh no, well that guy. There was that guy and the, the weird silver guy, and then there was the lady with the Saturn around her head, the yeah. Saturn ring around her head. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I have man. one. I have that fucking video. Still have that stupid Saturn video where it's like, you know. You have decided to come to the world of this blah blah blah. It's beyond imagination. <laughs> yeah. Any what? What, what other old nineties ads. ads? Yeah, they got. Remember bring those the back. Uh, Atari Jaguar ads? Remember yes. the lady in the classroom? <laughs> yeah, that's. And right. everybody was too stupid to understand. Like, if you add thirty-two bits together, you get sixty-four bits. Yeah, they couldn't understand. Just... <laughs> I miss ads that got you hyped up for video games. Oh. Damn. Remember Gears of War. Remember Halo Three? Like those oh, yeah, those yeah. trailers used to give me so freaking hype. Yeah, and PlayStation's trying. I so mean, you could. That's what their whole ad campaign now is weakly attempting to do. But I think it had success the very first time they kind of previewed it. Like the whole greatness awaits to all the different video game characters in the shop. Yeah, like, that was awesome. It, yeah, that was awesome. It, it's it's it used to be awesome. At this point, you're like, uh, it just does not feel like it doesn't. The very first couple made you were like, yeah, let's play some video games. And then after that, it kind of, yeah. 
but yeah, like it's it's like they're like what games were we hyped up this gen that we like and and were any trailers that we saw got us hyped for the game like more than we already were? I don't think so. Yeah. Unless by the way, uh, Solitary Zombie says again. Remember this one? Your mom hates Dead Space. I remember that. <laughs> or or or, or Mega Mega Pegasus or Reindeer. Yeah, that's right. He I like the the Xbox one where the the woman's giving birth and the baby shoots out. It's flying across. <laughs> that's the, like, that's the got banned. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. when I eventually got banned. Yeah, he's flying. He starts aging as he's flying, and then next you know, go straight into a coffin. Yeah, turn into an old man. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I'm forgetting some. There's a, there's been a bunch of them. This is good stuff. Oh, the Crash Bandicoot runs. Remember those with that guy in the in the suit and shit? Yeah, he was he just screaming at people. Nintendo. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he had a megaphone. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was awesome, man. All right, and the last question of the night: If THQ Nordic doesn't clean up their mess, he's talking about the whole eight chant thing. Uh, do you think they could be in trouble in the industry? Nah, nah. I think they're gonna. I think people will forget about it. Yeah, people will probably yeah, it wasn't about it. it. Yeah. Because Nothing remember, massive they, they came from it. So here's the thing: they didn't do anything deliberately horrible. They just did something very stupid. That was it. Yeah. People already forgot about it, so no, it's not going to hurt them in the long run. You'll be all right, you know. Shit, I mean, no, people it, have. Go ahead, Brian. Um, forgot about the whole Rockstar thing. So. You know, oh like yeah, yeah, that's right. How, like, the hundred like, percent like, Rockstar working yeah. missions like crap. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. No one's talking about that anymore. Forget about it. Yeah, isn't that interesting? What about that? The developers that made that game that uh, you drag uh, a Mexican guy and he just starts screaming in Wait, Spanish, what? and and that's the game, and you just drag him around on on the back of a motorcycle. Is that a triple A game? That game, yeah, that was a triple A. That was a launch game on PS4. What? And that was a triple A, and it was by the people that did. Uh, oh man, what did they? Do? Splatoon, man. Uh, what? Not Splatoon. What's Adam's it called? Dreaming of games, right? No, now, man. Right? That was a uh, that was vicious. That game. I could not I believe that they even Adam. thought that was funny. Adam thought about this in a fever dream. No, <laughs> man. You don't remember this? This was. No, I've never heard of this. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever oh, heard of this. Yo, Adam. Yeah, I think. Adam. I think. Yo, I'll, you, I'll, you I'll need to lay off it. the meds, man. I'm I'll push it. When I show you this, you'll be like, "Oh shit, off that's meds, right." Put on the meds. That's right. And I it was. <laughs> yo, by the way, lo- I think um, all they just saved them. Loco cycle was that it? There you go. Wow. There you go. Walk that really? shit was brutal, and they didn't see anything wrong with it. And I'm like, yo, how did you approve something like this? Well, it was too. I've never heard of this. I've never even heard of this shit. It was yeah. so I've heard of brutal. it, but I don't remember that was the the idea yeah. behind it. Yeah, that was it. And he says, starts screaming in, in Spanish and saying different things, and you're just dragging him Martito around. Martito loco. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Loco cycle. There you go, people. Um, all right. Um, okay, we're done, and we answered all these questions in two hours. I want to give all you guys here on the panel. No, 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 not 19. Motherfucker 21, man. Respect to everybody. See, this is what you call professionalism, people. You know? We know how to do this shit. Um, Fucking awesome. Um, We don't really have anything to say other than Glorious War. Uh, He gave me his info, so I'm going to hit up Stubby Stan from uh, Spawn on Me. He's going to get his game. You know? Um, Glorious War, I don't know if you want me to say what game you uh, requested, but it's an upcoming game that everybody's hyped about. Um... That has slashing, but it's not DMC. I think I just gave it away, but I think that's what he wants. So that's cool, you know. And then um, Spawn on Me is going to do a contest where we're going to give, we're going to pay for one of their um, fans to get a game. So I like that synergy, man. It's good stuff. You know. Have you, did you already give Stubby the, the, the you know, the, the 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 heads up that we were doing it? Oh uh, yeah, I'm going to do it uh, tomorrow. It's, you know, because okay. I'm pretty sure he's sleeping now. Oh, he, he it's Sekiro, um, Shadows Die Twice. That's the game he wants. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you know I got his info. Also, my man's in Australia, so we serve the world people. That's how Throwdown does. In the mundo. Does <laughs> he want the physical? <laughs> yeah, he wants physical. Yeah, he wants physical. Yeah, you know? It's also you, you're probably doing him a favor because he probably Ooh. has to pay like a hundred bucks for yeah, that. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. and also not not to mention, not to mention he's in Australia, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of games get seriously like forget banned. Yeah, they, there's yeah, a like, lot of censorship for the game. Censored, yeah. censored over there. So he, you know, well, I don't know what. Is, the- I, I, well, he told me that he could buy from the Amazon in Australia. They accept <laughs> American money, you know. So, oh yeah, because I, I don't think I don't know if an if an American game is going to work on an Australian system. No, it'll work. Oh, it's no region locked, right? Yeah, no, no okay. games are really, really but, region locked anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk to him, but I think he wants me to get... I, I guess you want the Australian version, dude? I don't know. We'll figure that shit out. You know, but yeah. you, you'll get your game. 
Um, anyway, let me pop up the the schedule here for Throwdown. Again, the Discord thing has obviously been working well. I was ver I was kind of afraid that people wouldn't go to it. No, they fucking did. You, remember, we started getting questions in there before we officially launched it. <laughs> you know, that's mm -hmm. how crazy it was. So, yeah, if you want to ask us questions for any episode of Throwdown Questions, uh, step one, you join our Discord, uh, which is linked down below right there on Twitch on Twitter and on actually no on Twitter it's already already there pinned on Twitch if you're looking at it right now you scroll down a little bit you're gonna see it there and on YouTube it's linked down there as well so that's step one join our Discord um, step two on Discord go to throw down your questions section and step three submit your questions limit to two you know um, yeah I think that's it for this week people so thank you for joining us and all that stuff. Uh, I don't feel like reading all this shit. <laughs> but yeah, leave us <laughs> a questions in the, the Discord. You already know. Subscribe to Throwdown on SoundCloud, iTunes, and the YouTubes. Follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at Throwdown Show. Links are located, as always, in the descriptions and all that other shit. So once again, I was your host, Tony Polanco. And tonight I was joined by Emilio Lopez. I'll see you later, guys. So hopefully uh, I'll be I'll be able to be live on a show instead of uh you know the next door down as opposed to being on a bus or in a train station adding my own <laughs> uh, external uh you know soundtrack. But uh yeah. Chris Seeley. Hey, take care everyone. Carlos Romero. Peace out. Brett Murdoch. It's been real as always. Adam Vale. Have a good week, people. And Brian Monjoma. Go watch that Overlord. It's actually quite nice. Oh, Overlord's great. That's a fun movie. Mm -hmm. All right, people. Later. Later, guys. Peace. Deuces. Gonna go hit the bed.